Hi, Cizrin here, and today I am privileged to be joined by Neon, or Mark Roberts, Game Director of Path of XL1. And we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff, uh, including Necropolis League. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Yeah, no problem. It's good to be here. It's actually my uh, first one-on-one -on -one interview outside of XLCon ever in my 11 years, of coming on 12 years here, so a little bit... I'm yeah. not used to this for sure, but... Uh, <laughs> we'll, and we've been we'll see seeing more and more of you lately. Do you want to like give yourself a little bit of an introduction of what you currently do at Granny Gear Games? Uh, sure. So I am uh, the game director. Uh, what does that mean? Um, or one of the game directors. Uh, what does that actually mean? Um, ultimately, I decide what happens. Um, I yes or no things on a gra grander detail. Um, a lot of the nitty gritty can get, you know, I trust to other people at that point. If we, I wasn't doing that, I would be completely drowning all the time. Um, high level design decisions, um, most of that. And obviously there's a bit of a thing of like the highest and lowest points of game development are both a form of QA. Um, ultimately, I am the one that has to say whether or not something is good enough um, to be presented to people. Um, so yeah, ultimately I kind of just a big, I walk around saying yes or no a lot of the time and discussing a lot of philosophy and whether or not we should do things. Um, but it's very moment to moment, computer to computer. Um, not really sitting there on my computer doing things. I'm walking from person to person to person, kind of seeing their work, kneeling down next to them, kind of seeing what's going on, talking to them, making sure everyone's on the right track, um, stopping things that are on the wrong track, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So very hands-on, very uh, active and very enjoyable awesome and you still like get time to play the game a lot yourself as well right i do um less than i would like but um that's ultimately you know you do things like eventually you buy a house and now you have to spend x amount x percent of your life dealing with that and then you you know you get a cat or well, i've got a cat and all of a sudden a small sliver of well, cats are not high maintenance but anyway you um you end up losing a bit of your time to all of that and um but I say mostly my predicament is that I get stuck in this, like, uh, you know, is it more enjoyable to play the game or work on the game? And uh, often working on the game is more enjoyable, but playing the game is often, like, obviously still very enjoyable. Um, but sometimes working on the, the new thing can be a little bit more of an allure for me, especially if it's a fun problem to try and solve or something that we're developing. So... Um, either way, like you could argue I'm still interacting with the game, but yes, sometimes I am, uh, you know, working a lot more than I am playing, and sometimes I am playing um, a little bit more than I'm working, obviously still doing a lot, lot of work, but nonetheless. Um, yeah, I, I feel like it's important for for game devs to play their own game a lot as well. Like, I feel like you always see and notice that when, when people play their own game. And I think we, we have that here, and especially with the way you were talking about things. You were like, this is good. This is bad. Let's change it. And that's uh, very refreshing, at least to me as a, somebody that does play the game a lot. So that's awesome. There's, there's certainly details. I used to remember every single you name of every single unique, their stats, their min ranges, max ranges, every, you could have told me every notable on the tree and I'd tell you exactly what it was. That, I don't know if it's the whole getting into 30s and short-term memory loss, or if it's it the, um, uh, probably, or if it's just simply that I'm more focused on the broader scale and less on the, like, exact details. Like, I will see unique items early in the development when their name is, like, rename me in capital letters, and then, uh, and then I'm like, yep, this is good, and then they'll go into it, they'll get a name, but I never know what that name is, and then someone's talking about it later, and unless I've specifically seen it on live or I've like approved a um, like post to go to, uh, like a teaser or something like that, I've someone will say a name and I'm like, I don't I don't know what that is. Um, yeah. Like, so, yeah, there's there's details that got lost. Um, but again, when I was QAing everything and designing everything and actually putting the actual entries in game, I certainly knew more of the finer details. But I certainly know a lot more now in terms of, you know, bigger picture. Um, and actually how to design grander systems and put them together and all of that. Um, but I still do play as much as I can. Um, but yeah, um, then yes, as I said before, the short-term the short memory loss in the 30s certainly uh, 
uh, starts to play a role. So everyone can look forward to that one. I'm pretty sure that's a, a universal problem. <laughs> it is. Getting past 30 was hard. I'm 35 now. I feel old. <sighs> Um, I figured we Fine, could... that's let's, move, let's move on. We're gonna yeah, I don't want to talk about, about age. Yeah. I want to, <laughs> I want to talk about our first topic, which is teasers, which, uh, you reached out and you were like, Hey, I don't know if you would mind, but like, we could show off lots of cool things that are coming. And I was like, yeah. Um, um, yeah, I'm always keen to do that. I, um, obviously we'll post all this, uh, to everyone afterwards. I don't want it to be that if you're not here, you fully miss out, of course. Um, yeah. so that's fine, but uh, I figured we can go through them and discuss some of them. Um, so, yeah, I mean, start us off with whatever you want, really. I have it all prepared. It is ready to go. All right. Let's see. Just going to move it below our windows. There we go. All right, best series Scarab of the Shadowed Crow. Area contains the Black Morrigan, if it contains Einar. Oh, well, what does that mean? I wonder. Uh, the Black Morrigan was the beast, the monster. There's like a crow monster boss from uh, Affliction, but yeah. um, this one's a little bit mysterious, um, and I won't give away too much. But it's just kind of some of the. There's an, obviously a new beast to capture, and I guess the implication is that that beast can be used in some recipes that you may or may not know about, and we'll have to find out what those are. Could, um, could, could that be that which was taken? Uh, no, it is not that which was oh. taken. But speaking of that, we can quickly tangent to that. So yes, I, I do have a little bit of, um, that obviously was very powerful. Yeah. No doubt about it. Um, in the context of charms not really existing, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because now it just feels like a, a, we don't want our uniques to feel like, uh, rare items and that they get a random set of modifiers. And in the context where you have charms, you can have the unique and the unique has a random set of those things modifiers it makes a bit more sense. Now, I know there are modular unique items and jewels in particular, so like Watcher's Eye, but at least it's like, it has some of the fixed mods and, you know, like there are some kind of half exceptions. But um, that being said, what I do want to try and do in the future is because Ritual doesn't really have a meta end game, is try and work the King of the Mists into that, change it so that some of the Affliction monsters are part of Ritual and then... Uh, have it that a more end game objective is to actually, you know, get to that boss and kill that boss. And then you might see some return of some of these items, including that. No promises, of course, but the hope is that um, we may even find a way to integrate charms some other way, not necessarily into like a socket on an ascendancy class or anything like that. It could just yeah. be some other way, but, you know, my hope is to reintegrate that and it will give ritual. I know we added omens this league to ritual, yeah. um, but it would give ritual a bit more of an in-game thing and a bit more of a like meta objective outside of just you know killing monsters in a circle repeatedly yeah um so so sort of that would be potentially something... something similar to ultimatum where there's a chance that it opens up to the boss with kings of mist uh yeah or it could be that like you know we adapt the ritual splinters to something where you're accumulating pieces that you put together and then eventually mm. go and find him or something like that i'm i'm not exactly too sure we'll experiment with a number of options but awesome. um Hopefully we can do that because it also just modernize the content in a in a way and add a little bit more to it and just make it more fun and a bit more, you know, have a bit more depth to it. That sounds super cool. All right. Should we uh, look at the next Scarab? Sure. We have, we have a lot the of Scarabs. Ordering. That's the that's the thing. Yeah. So the next one that I see is Scarab Beyond 5. Beyond Scarab uh, yeah, of the, the Invasion. I need to resize yep. it a little bit here. I've got the uh, I got the same images here, and I got on my keyboard, so I'm going through them. So hopefully, oh, nice. we, if we have the same order, otherwise yeah. we'll be dealing with a little bit of stream delay. Unique um, monsters slain in the area create eight to twelve additional beyond portals. Nice. Uh, so yeah. So I guess this one is really like I I could see what stacking rogue exiles, uh, stuff like that to help promote getting maximum amount of. Uh, beyond output um there are obviously a whole suite of beyond scarabs there are for most of these but we've picked out just individual ones that i thought were kind of interesting or had uh interesting interactions with other leagues and stuff like that um mm -hmm. so yeah i mean we don't have to discuss these thoroughly some of them are yeah. straightforward and just to the most yeah so. this one is very, pretty straightforward um, one thing you'll notice um and i know this one is limited to one but it's something we didn't really talk about is the scarabs now have a limit so uh you can see oh, that I below see the stack size 
So previously, um, scarabs were completely mutually exclusive. You could not use two of the same one. Now sometimes you can and sometimes you can't. And it's actually, uh, as we get through some of these, you might wow. see some limited to twos. Some of them are limited to four. Um, obviously, you can't do more than four. Um, that is yeah. the, the ca current, probably maybe forever cap on our map device slots. Um, but yeah, anyway, we'll keep an eye on that one wow. as well as that is a new thing. So that limit does mean how many of them you can put in with a single map. Yeah. Um, so it allows you to sometimes do a bit more than you could before. Very cool. Um, I'm going to open the Scarab Breach new one. Area contains two additional breaches. Awesome. Yep. Here's an example of a limit to limited oh, uh, nice. four. Wow. So this is like, if you just, like, let's say you're fully invested on the Atlas tree into breaches and you don't wow. have, like, so the Scarabs have different kind of commonalities. So this one will drop the most common out of all of the Breach Scarabs and uh, because it is just the enabling the League. Um, so you might often have a lot more of these than the other oh. types. And you can, if you get excess of ones you don't want to run, you can use the 3 to 1 recipe with the vendor to get a random output. Um, the Harvest conversion, which was posted the other day, I believe, is gone. And the reason we did that, I would just uh, verify, uh, clarify that, is that like we wanted it to be that we could drop more. Um, and we found that with that in place, it was people were feeling obliged to, uh, you know, effectively have to spec into some level of harvest so that they could always re-roll them. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, internally, we were like, let's just get rid of that. Um, let's do, we can still do the three to one, but that way it's at least um, costly, and we will just drop more of them. Like they are quite plentiful. I think people might actually be quite surprised to how plentiful we've gone with this, um, at least from our testing. And we've actually had the scarabs on. Um, Alpha, which is very uh, uh, not normal for us. We've had the scarabs with the drop rates and it being iterating on that on Alpha for, I think, a good month, um, which oh. is very un not normal. That might not seem like a long time to, to most people in other games, but real, uh, normally there's like a, if you're lucky, you'll get two weeks of Alpha testing just because things aren't ready enough. So we specifically got ahead of this feature because I was like, okay, if we ruin end game juicing, uh, like the, the the game's probably dead, so let's not do that. Um, so if we're going to do something this risky, we need to be damn certain it's going to be good. Um, and so I feel like we've taken every measure possible to try and confirm that. So uh, yes, we've had a lot of testing on this one, and we're pretty happy. And they are quite plentiful. And obviously, with the Atlas tree, you can spec into a lot, getting a lot more of them if you want, um, or oh. if you don't want. Um, but yeah, yeah. I anyway, mean, so this is a common that's one. Very cool. Oh, sorry. No, I think the the limit thing is just a very interesting way to make something, because this is sort of the equivalent of like the the cheaper scarabs before, but having the limit thing there makes it so much more interesting. So I really like that. Yeah. So yeah, it might find you have excess of these, and thus you can use more of these at once. So if you just want to run eight breaches every map, um, and you don't really want to like run your other breach scarabs, you don't have to, and maybe because the tree's investing in it, and then when you find a rarer one, a rarer scarab. Um, you might do maybe two of these, one of those, and one of something else, and you know you, you can. There's heaps of like combinations and mixing and matching that we expect people to do. Very cool. All right, we'll look at another one. Breach new two will always belong to Chayula. Limit one. Nice. Uh, yeah, so this is one of those examples of a rarer one, and you might want to occasionally use this, especially, well, you, you're you probably going to want to use this when you're also fully investing in everything else possible with Breach. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it is expected that you kind of, like, I would expect people not to use too many of these ones without also being fully invested into the tree. Yeah. And that's, again, where the multiple tree uh, comes into play. Um, but, again, if you... You can either save it for later if you do want to like maybe change a tree later, or if you just don't want to run it for that league, just trade them all away or three to one them. But I suspect three to oneing higher rarity ones is not going to be something you really want to do. It's more of the things for the lower, the more yeah, common so ones. Yeah, so you sure. can three to one one of the lower ones and get lucky and get one of the best ones. Uh yes, you can. I'm. 99% sure of that. I'm just trying to oh. think if we. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it should be fully random. It's like obviously. It's still rare, but yes, you can get lucky oh. and get that, yeah. Let's look at the Breach New 3. Contains a Breach Lord. So that'll be on so every obviously, Breach. Uh, yes, it will be in every Breach. 
so yes, obviously you run a number of breaches, you then get Chiola, and if all of them can be Chiola, you then get a Breach Lord guaranteed in every single one of them, and then obviously again combined with the tree, now you're just obviously getting metric shit tons cool. of splinters going on there of Chiola type. Awesome. Moving on to the next one, Breach 4. 50% more splinters, 50%... Oh, and the class plans also give 50% more splinters, and a limit of 2, so you can get 100% more. Yep, so it's... I guess you're going to have to kind of weigh it up at some point. If your goal is to get XP and more standard drops, it might be worth using another plus two breaches. Whereas if your goal is to get uh, like breach stones, then it could be that this is actually more what you want to do. And you could, there's, there's some quantification you're going to have to do to weigh that up again, balancing it with your tree and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's straightforward. It's 50% or 100% more breach splinters from the hands and monsters. Yep. So that's the full breach set of them. Yeah, here's um, the last one. Breach agree. Scarab of Snares. Oh, no, there's one more. Five to ten additional class turns, and they're guarded by a rare breach monster. Yeah, wow, so that's every time you monsters. open them, a rare monster comes out. Yep. Wow. That is a lot more rare monsters. And, and that's, for... again, per breach. <laughs> so that's awesome. What do you... Depends how many breaches. You can get a lot of breaches, um, but um, I know some of them are percent chance. Quite rare on the tree. There's that, like, uh, low chance for heaps. And for like for those that didn't catch it, the hands open automatically now. So very cool. Ah oh, yes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> um, Scarab... There's some things. There's some things like that which seem so obvious. Like yeah. you just like like of course it is just annoying the whole time, and yet nothing really ever triggered in my brain to tell me like this is easily changeable. It was actually. Um, we were talking with one of the console producers here and he was just like, you can't target them in the midst of all that because of the way that um, console targeting has prioritizations. And yeah. I was just like, oh, well, like, of course that's a problem. Um, let's change it. But like, obviously it should just change in both versions. And so like, that's just an example of just someone bringing that up. And it's just, it, even though it seems so obvious when it's mentioned, um, I don't know, I guess it gets... It's harder for those, like, like a single detail of a single league to really remain at the front of your brain. Like, when you then, even if you're yeah. playing at home and you, I mean, I end up writing down, like, 30 things when I'm playing and I'm like, here's all the things I want to talk about or get changed. And then um, I come in and I normally talk about it, but stuff like that can often just easily get lost and just yeah. kind of be at the background for so long. Yeah. How do you feel about doors? Uh, there is, I, I think clicking them is essential. Um, but there is something certainly not entirely fun about it, but I don't think that doors should automatically open for you. I definitely do not believe in that. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Is, do you want to expand on that? Cause I don't particularly feel like it's super beneficial to click on doors. Um, I'd say this one's a little bit, it's going to seem nebulous because at the end of the day, I don't have a good rationale aside from just, it should feel realistic. Right. Um, and I think that is a, I know it's fantasy, but I mean, in the sense of physics should feel realistic in that regard. Um, like there are worlds where I could see, you know, there's a specific magical skill that someone like a, a gem or something or something where you can like, you know, use lightning magic to open a door from a distance. And or they have a health bar. Some, uh, I mean, in some cases, yes, some probably could be damageable and thus openable on damage. There possibly are some circumstances, but like say the big Val stone doors, I don't think that should necessarily be the case. That's yeah. also a, kind of a lot of work to do that. Right. But um, it's, I am. I like a game that feels as uh, like grounded as possible, and that is a thing where it's like just to be able to like if your character is just like telepathically able to open doors, then why isn't it telepathically able to do a million other things? Um, mm. And I just think that keeping that grounded and keeping that uh, well I guess physics to some degree is important for me. It could also be that like the Val just like started like this new door company and expanded their doors to the rest of the world, you know, like automatic doors, five ninety nine per door, buy them here. Well, technically the Val did do it. The Val just only did it in incursion temples yeah. and those and that and whatever structures those are for some reason. They maybe that they uh they had the cataclysm before they could expand <laughs> that technology everywhere else. I don't I don't know. That's fair. Um, I just had to ask, I feel like I would have gotten lynched if I didn't, but definitely that's something that a lot of people in the community do on automatic doors. 
At least in more places. Um, it's it's certainly in that category of thing of just like automate everything, click less on everything. And I understand how people get there, but I think that is one where I would not cross that mm -hmm. line. Um, there are uh, there are many other things I would rather improve than that. And I'll, I'll quickly like okay. Um, it's somewhat adjacent, but it's to do with clicking on things. Um, I don't know if you noticed in, in that PoE2 build that you played. I don't know if anyone really noticed, but um, did you or anyone mention the um, item pickup range? Yeah, it's, it's longer. Very, very noticeable longer, but I did okay, not mention yeah. it in so my that video. Is, so the moment... I, yeah, I haven't watched all the stuff uh, responding to that, but uh, that is something I would like to move over, so at least it's like less... I have to walk three centimeters. Um, now, I want to make sure we get it perfectly right before we do that, because that is the kind of thing where once you put it in, it cannot go lower. It can yeah. go higher, but it cannot go lower. Um, so we want to get that perfectly right in POE 2, and then I would be pretty keen to move that over. Um, it does require a little bit of... Like, it's not just item pickup, it's NPC interaction. Like, you don't need to be... Speaking of the physics and the real reality, you don't need to be three centimeters in uh, real-world space away from an NPC's face to be talking to them. Um, you can perfectly do it from like two meters away. So uh, there's things like that as well where I'd like it to just improve interaction distances okay. kind of across the board so you don't have to be so close to everything. Um, and doors would probably get the same kind of treatment, so at least you wouldn't have to be like actually touching them. Um, but I can't say exactly what that should be. Like yeah. what we're doing in the POE2 is going through object to object to object and like customizing exactly what we want that range to be that it kind of feels appropriate yet also feels okay to use on WASD. So even though POE1 won't have WASD in that regard, uh, at ever? least something like the interaction distances are uh, ever. Well, there's a lot needed for that. Um, it's a, I'm just going down the it's giant It's just line, really line interesting because I yeah, hated so, the idea of WSD, but after trying it, it was very good. Uh, most people are going to be converted. But um, the... Okay, what's actually needed for that is we need the, the new character rig. Just thinking about this. In order to get the new character rig, you'd have to have all the new animations, which seems like a win, except not all POE1 skills will have animations on that new rig. So you'd have to do a bunch of animating. And in order to get the rig, you'd have to re-rig every single... You'd have to reskin every single armor in the game, all POE1 items, and all existing microtransactions. Now, that is being done for POE2. Um, so I, I could see a world... I could see a world where, like... A, some amount, probably like a year into POE2, we would be like able to have had all the items on POE 1 rigged in, onto that rig, and thus it could port over, and thus you'd get all the new animations. Now, whether or not we actually want to do that, a different story, but uh, there is a world, but that would then give us the minimum requirement for uh, WASD to be on POE 1. So, like, we're talking a way away, and yeah. that is, like, a strong if, you know what I mean? Like... Oh. And that's just straight objective resourcing. That's not like a philosophical decision by any means. That is just like there is a ton of ton work of that needs to be done to achieve that. Yeah. Awesome. Let's look at more teasers with the Scarab Domination 4. Shrines in the area are what guarded. What have we got here? Domination Scarab of Tears? Yeah. That one, yep. Yeah. Huh. Uh, well, okay. How many is that a random map boss? Ah, uh, yes, it should be, but, you know, I will get that confirmed. Um, it should be random. It shouldn't just be the same one, uh, but if it, uh, you never know. It might have been set up that way. Um, so what can you get? 11 shrines? Can that sort of drop thing? anything, like guardian maps, con like stuff like that? I do believe that's what that last line is meant to imply. It might have alt text that verifies that. I think it is meant to drop the guardian maps and the additional maps and all of that. Um, I can wow. verify that afterwards, uh, and I can let you know, and then you can tell people if you want, but um, I'm pretty sure that was intended. Very cool. Yeah, because I, I would have read the last line as just can. damage mods apply to it. I, I, I agree. I actually do believe. I consider that to be unclear, and I'm hoping that has a reminder text. Otherwise, we will. Um, cool. I will get that verified, if not. Oh, that would be super nice. Awesome. That was a very cool one. Um, man, we have so many. Uh, we'll move to Essence 1. 
This is just Essence wow. Scarab. So that's similar to the Breach it one. Is, yeah, is what it is. We can okay. just move on. Add two Essences. Essence Scarab off Ascent. Higher tier, mm -hmm. higher. Limit of one. So this is, I guess, it used to be on the passive tr uh, Atlas tree and is now found on an Essence instead. Um, that's nice. Uh, but not a huge amount to discuss there. Nah, uh, I'll move on to three. No, wait. Three is skipped, so we only have four. <laughs> Very curious. Uh, so yeah, I, three is... I haven't put them all in. So yeah, we can, you can just read out the um, actual name. So Essence Scarab of Calcification. Yep. That's it. Right. Um, oh, wow. This... What? It doesn't include League content, of course. They can't spawn out of a breach and just be in an imprisonment, but all natural inhabitants, <laughs> uh, rare monsters, will be imprisoned in Essences, yes. What? So wait, how um, many you're... maps or how many Essences are you going to get in a Juice map now? Uh, wow. Okay, well, you can get two per Scarab, and then I can't remember how many you're getting from the tree, so I mean... And then, I mean, that doesn't matter, though. On top of this, you're getting... Definitely what do you got, one. like 50 natural, natural packs? I mean, you got about 50 and 40. I mean, it's seven. Okay, so if you take like a 70,000 uh, effectiveness map, as we like to call it internally, which is one of the better maps, uh, like as in highest density of monsters, you'll get, uh, what is that? Wow. 70 packs and you got 14%. Uh, I mean, it's what, like, uh, uh, you could get maybe 10, without adding extra other packs to, that might um, get imprisoned, you will get, like, an extra 10 essence pack, uh, essence monoliths, I guess, maybe. Wow. And, and probably, probably, this doesn't work with um, any of their league content, like Legion, Breach, etc., right? Uh, it should not, no, because those kind of technically spawn afterwards. And Yeah, um, that's so cool. I will verify some of that as well, because there is some interaction that I'm thinking about that I'm not too sure on, uh, like... Beasts? Um, well, I wouldn't say so much beasts, but you never know. Um, but more like, actually, that is the one that might. I, I would have to double check. Um, but uh, it could also be like, if you add packs through other scarabs, I'm not sure if they like just random packs that you can get, which like what the sextants used to do. I'm not sure if those will count either. So oh. there's some detail I'll look into there, but... Um, we can if if you uh if we keep some notes in this uh, in the like chat on Discord or to keep a list of the questions or or I can get Nicholas is probably listening he can do it um we'll I give a bunch of answers afterwards as to verify how a lot of these work so um I wish I knew enough but again this yeah. is that kind of level of detail that I'm not really kind of I'm like this is cool let's do it and then some little decisions will be made along the way and then I'm like you know you can go either way with that as to what's like actually implementable and what's fun and uh, we'll just go ahead and that will be how it works. Um, but then those things don't necessarily get told back to me on that level of detail. And then I discover them on live and I'm like, holy shit, this is too broken. What have you guys done? Or I'll be like, yep, sweet, perfect. Well done, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, I am a little bit curious with uh, all of these things being reworked. Is that going to potentially need a balance pass on the memories, like the essence memory and things like that? Um, possibly. I'd say I'm not happy with where memory lines are. Um, I think they can be a more um a bit more of a core system. And right now they're very rare, very hidden, and some are broken and some are terrible. Yeah. And I think that just needs some love. Um it was on the cards for 324 but there's just no way we had enough time to do that, that so i would say that's later it's the one rem aside from favored maps it's the one remaining thing that is actually used on your atlas and that's something i like i like the fact that you actually have something that you can uh you actually right click and left click on your atlas and picking a map is relevant and actually has an impact now that sextants are gone but then again that's not to say sextants were the right way of doing that i think uh we can replace so uh, I have one other idea there. I, I'll mega tangent, but hopefully it's all good. Um, Go ahead. There's a new scarab that is um, the divination. I can't. I think it was of scrying or something like that. Um, and it's the one where it's like your favored maps drop um, in a different. Uh, 
the map you're running drops your favored maps divination cards instead or as well as i can't remember um i actually wanted to make a scrying orb that is something where you can right click on one map left click on another map and it will t move the divination cards drops from that map to the new map and i still want to do this um i actually think that is a very good solution to the whole like i want to run the map i want to play instead of having to run the one that um is you know has the best cards now I don't know if that would mean you can move six different maps to one. I suspect it'll start as at least as a one-to-one -one, uh, correlation, but um, that is something I really want to do. Um, that's just something we were discussing recently, and I was like, I feel like this would help. So that Scarab, that kind of does that in a different way, we could, would be able to stack with that as well. It's not like an issue that they can both coexist, but um, I don't want it to be that the solution to that problem is finding a rare Scarab. I want it to be that this is something you can do a bit more often. Um, but anyway, that's just a random potential future teaser that hopefully may or may not happen, depending if people think that's a good idea, really. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, I mean, just looking at Chet's reaction to that, everybody's really excited with that. I did see some people were saying, won't we only run one map then? But, I mean, I'm not against it. Um, I would argue a lot of people already kind yeah. of do that. And yes, maybe. Um, there's kind of some ways around that. Um, but... I would argue that is, I mean, okay, the, here's the question. If you remove divination cards from the equation entirely, would everyone still just run one map? Yeah. And I don't know if the answer is yes, and I don't know if the answer is no. Uh, you obviously always get the meta and the majority doing a thing. Uh, but is that, I guess, how much different is it from what's happening right now? And it may be right. quite different. Yeah. Maybe uh, it maybe isn't. I. I feel like before we added that, there was still a, a decent chunk of you run different maps. I mean, yes, there was obviously the whole, like, everyone runs Gorge and everyone runs Strand and everyone runs... Um, but we also had the capacity to, like, we, we can rebalance maps. Like, we can change map layouts. We can change densities of monsters and maps. We can... There are plenty of levers we can up and down, and we haven't yeah. really been doing that, honestly, for quite some time, because ultimately what governs what maps are run is either it's the most efficient for boss running or it's got uh, highly efficient, like the, the highest value or set of values for um, divination card acquisition. Yeah. But anyway. Another, another thing as well that I was thinking of is like, for example, I always run blight scarabs in uh, carcass and things like that. So you get more blight rewards. So it's generally just like, well, yeah, when you have a reason to do a different map. Uh, for sure. I actually like the... Um, I like the difference between, say, like, um, you know, when you are, when, if people feel it is obviously good enough to run the whole, do the 10 way fights, which I know aren't as good as uh, just like spamming the guardians for mavens and whatnot. I would like to actually mitigate that a little bit as well. But when it is, kind, when someone does choose to kind of do the 10 way maps and you're kind of just running whatever maps you want, I actually do think that is, can be a quite a fun play style. Um, but you have to be non, you'd have to be not. Uh, economically driven to really convince yourself to do that right now, which there are players who do that, and that is fun. Um, but yeah, I I, I want to make it that the uh, economically driven decisions there play less of an impact, I guess. Um, yeah. Which is just a matter of balance and the balance not being correct. So. Yeah, I feel like a little bit of it is also that you have to choose between like Maven or Eater or Exarch influence. Like if I could Maven and Eater influence, that would maybe be less of a, a problem. Well, hopefully, at least now, uh, you can have one tree that does one and another that does another, yeah. and at least you can choose which one you're going to do and change between them on a daily or hourly or whatever you want basis, and that is so much better for me, and I, I'm i very happy about right. that. So, People are um, very excited for that. Yeah. We'll move on to the Harbinger Scarab here. This is um, Harbinger Scarab of Discernment. Drop a rare currency shard. And drop a single type so it picks one and only drops that so this i guess will be if you get happen to get the fractured shard i guess is the the um the best outcome that can happen there and uh you know you might it's i get it'll, it'll have the same kind of impact as finding like the divine altar from eater or something of just like come on hopefully it happens hopefully it happens and then when it happens you make big money um wait we still have mirror shard so, right I uh, it is still on there. Is it still on there? <laughs> I mean, we haven't changed it in this patch, so if it is still on yeah. there, then it is still on there. Uh, I just don't remember exactly. 
I, I, <laughs> you'd have this thing. I have this thing all the time where I'm like, I could say with certainty one way or another until someone asks me the question. And then I'm like, oh no, now I'm doubting myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I get that. But I don't know. I, if oh, it's there, so then cool, yes. Though. And if it's not there, then no. So, wow. That's very cool. Um, the next Harbinger Scarab is of War Hordes. They're duplicated. Cool. Wow. That just literally multiplicative with the one from before. Not much more to say about that. So now when you get the good thing, you get twice of the good thing. Very, very cool. Now, are you a little bit worried that there will be like set ways? Like that people will feel like they kind of need everything before they're using anything instead of using like, oh, I'm just going to throw some in in white maps or yellow maps? Um. With, okay, so because the scarabs are done by rarity, uh, so there's kind of like common ones and uncommon ones and rare ones, kind of. It's not exactly like that, but you know that that's ultimately kind of how it works. Yeah. Um. The intention is that, like, yeah, if you get the rarest one, you're going to want to use it with the set and probably with the tree, of course. Um. But at least with the more the the uh, you know the kind of bottom or two top two or three uh, lowest two or three rarities highest whatever the ones that are most common um you will you should have the freedom to kind of use those whenever you want and not have to always feel like you're using them with a set because otherwise you're just going to have too many of them anyway yeah um so yeah hopefully it's not going to feel so restrictive that you have to get all of them in order to use them but it will be the case that when you get the highest tier one yet kind of as a piece of a set as opposed to just something you use uh, on its own so yeah that makes sense next up we have a harvest scarab maybe we should skip those um uh, That's doubling. I mean, you can just, just look at it and move on if we I'm want. I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, it's duplicated uh, uh, 100% more life. Nice. That's similar to the sex than before. Uh, yeah, I think I think I, I included some of these just because I wanted people to see that, you know, like we have included some of the sextant things. It's not just, I saw a lot of people going like, oh, this is gone and that's gone and that's going to go on because they just assume we're stingy and not going to be including them. And I just kind of wanted to give some examples of some of these, but again, yeah. we're going to post the full set. So uh, people can see that for themselves afterwards. Perfectly just fine. I'm now showing the cornucopia one. If an area contains the sacred grove, it'll contain up to one additional tier four seed of each type if possible. Wow. Uh, so yeah, that's obviously that's a, a thing. lot more of the, the boss seeds, the boss plants. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. I, I mean, one of my favorite things is synthesizing items with Harvest, so that's so cool. Um, we'll move on to Incursion. We only have one from Incursion, and this is Timelines. Oh! Yeah, so we've got Final Architect dropping an itemized temple, and the itemized temple dropped are generated based on the current temple layout, but with randomized room tiers. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 the temple you're building is relevant, but, yeah, the tiers will be randomized. Um, Can this honestly, drop I think we added that ends? bottom thing because it was too good. Uh, say again? Can this drop dead ends? Like, can we get a bricked temple as a drop? And you're like, ah, shit one. Um, I think it probably can because it's based on the current layout and I'm assuming, again, this is that detail I don't exactly 100% know, um, but I'm assuming the layout is matching what it is. So my assumption is if you're early in the temple and it drops, there's a probably a good chance that it will not have all the connections. Uh, and if it's like dropping later in the temple building, it will m more likely have the connections. Um, I could be wrong. There could be something specific implemented there, but yeah. I would assume that's the case. So I already have a follow-up question. If there, so it says that the tier is randomized. Is it affected by it at all? Like it's more likely to give a tier three corruption chamber if you already have one, or would you be benefiting from as soon as you see there's a corruption chamber, you start running with this? Uh, I would assume the tiers are straight up just randomized. So it's either one or two or three, and then there's right. nothing really influencing that. Um, so, you know, you're not always going to get good ones, and sometimes yeah. you'll get great ones. But at least at the end of the day, you're still getting a, an additional itemized temple, which may be amazing and may not be. Um, Very cool. But yeah, it sounds like you still want your corruption chambers and your gem chambers and, you know, like... Absolutely. Uh, 
I guess you're more likely to now want explosive rooms if yeah. the layout thing works the way we had. Like if it is actually random and you might have dead ends, so at least that will uh, inf increase the probability that when these drop, you can fix the connectivity if if it works the, the in actual randomness. Yeah, that's a that's a really cool idea. There's so many like neat and interesting new things here. Mm. Um, next up we have yeah, um, o Octavian Ooh. actually was the one who kind of designed most of these. Fun fact, and put all these together. So all of them. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously input from a bunch of others, but, yeah. um, you know, he, he kind of spearheaded it pretty early on. Well, I think they're being received pretty well. We're going to move over to the Scarab Influence. Um, tier 14 maps have a chance to drop a Shaper Guardian, Elder Guardian, or Crunker, or unique synthesized maps instead. Wow, so you really want to, like, juice how many maps you're finding? Uh, yep, definitely. Um... I don't know what that chance is, and it's probably undergone a number of iterations and balance. So even what it maybe was is probably uh, not what I remember it to. What it is is probably not what I remember it to be. But um, nonetheless, yes, it should be that you want to maximize the amount of maps dropping, which ideally would give you a lot more of. So you might want to run this paired with a number of map scarabs, I guess, combined with a specific tree layout and whatnot, and you'll min max your capability to get. Uh, yeah bosses do you know if this is like a five percent chance or an 80 percent chance like some sort of ballpark uh, honest at this point i have absolutely no idea that's fair and i don't even know if i'm going to mention say what it is because if it's if someone didn't put it on there for a reason so <laughs> um it could be a mistake it may not but um yeah. i know i have no idea and we will just see um hopefully it's enough to feel it working as opposed to just be like maybe it worked maybe it didn't uh yeah <laughs> But um, you will notice it working, obviously, because if it's like it's if very it binary, right? Those maps yeah. can't drop normally. So mm -hmm. if you're getting them or not from the boss, you will notice it working. So hopefully, it um is impactful. This is one of the rarer. It's on the rarer end of things. Uh, so it should be that it's quite good, and you're not using it like ultra commonly. Fifty fifty. Either it does or it doesn't. Um, we'll yeah, move perfect. on to the there Legion one. There's so many. I love that we're getting so many. Eternal Conflict. Wow. Um, this one's a little bit crazy. Um, so every time you break them out, they have more life than before. Um, so it's harder to break them out a second time. But like, if you can go ballistic with as much time as possible, uh, like I saw, I <laughs> internally we had a thing where um, there was they have a maximum. Uh, I think it's a diminishing returns actually on the amount of the chance of them to respawn with a reward, which is kind of how it works in um, Domain of Timeless Conflict. Um, because at one point I remember uh, Octavian was testing it, and he had a monster that had the reward symbols going probably like six screens to the right. Um, <laughs> they, they, you could run halfway across the map, and there would just be six <laughs> reward symbols stretching across the, the whole map. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's a little bit more balanced, but it's still pretty crazy right now. So headhunter and juries are really going to enjoy this. Um, yep. They will. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's uh, so cool. Ah, these are great. Um, that was the only Legion one. Maps new too. Cartography scarab of Ascension. All right, tier or higher up to a maximum of 16. Cool. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just trying yeah. to min, uh, max your, uh, I mean, this would also give you more test 17s technically as well, uh, because your 15s will now get converted to 16s, um, which would then have a chance to be, become 17s. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, technically That's works good. with that. Off corruption. Are oh, this this is one of the modifiers. sextant ones that. Yeah, this is one of the sextant ones that people were convinced we were removing, which we are not. Um, nice. You know, I can't remember if this works on 17s or not, because technically they're unmodifiable. Uh, you know, but I don't know. You could go either way. You could argue unmodifiable super, super, uh, modified supersedes corruption, which I think it does, or corruption supersedes unmodifiable, which would seem a bit pointless, because then you could... No, because you can't Valorb them. I would assume that tier 17s yeah. do not get affected okay. by this, but that's a bit of an assumption. Yeah. We have Cartographer's Curve of Duplication. Maps of 30% has to be duplicated. And I guess that will pair really nicely with the uh, the boss one. And it's the 60% yep. chance because yep. there's a limit too. 
Yep. Wow. Exactly that. Just for your for your bosses, really. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yep. Uh, let's see. That was five. All right. Scarab Miscellaneous One. Monstrous Lineage. Magic pack size forty percent. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so there's we have a we we tried to aside from having them all just like adjacent to leagues, we also wanted a like bunch that just kind of can intersect with a bunch of different leagues and buff them, and this is kind of one of those. There's one coming up a bit later um, that you want to remember this one. So remember magic pack size, and you'll see one of the ones coming up later, and you'll uh, associate them for sure. Okay. But obviously, this holds its own regardless. So yes, it's pretty pretty good. Scarab of Adversaries, four additional packs with mirrored monsters. And this does not make you immune to reflect. Um, so what I'm, I'm pretty sure these will also be imprisoned in essences, by the way, just thinking about that earlier one. Uh, I think this is an example of it probably act will work. Uh, so there's a way. Um, right. What did you ask, sorry? This doesn't give us reflect immunity. Uh, no, it does not. I mean, it would say it if it does, so no, yeah. it does not. <laughs> I'm going to miss that section. As, as people uh, like to, well, as I've said recently, deal with it is kind of my response to that one. <laughs> I will. Um, what, you try, can, what you can do. I'll try. I'll try my best. Um, <laughs> Scarab Miscellaneous 5, Scarab of Stability. Oh. Does this mean you I'd can have more than six a... people in your map? Uh, no, there is still a limit on the number of people within a, in a map, and that is capped at six. Um, but uh, this is, I guess, you know, like you'd run your tier 17. You, do, you don't want to really risk it. Mm. This is what you run with it, really. I mean, you can run it on others as well, but I wouldn't expect to have this one on hand all the time. Um, but yeah, so hopefully, I mean, you, it could, you could still only get six, but at least if you're thinking like, no, I don't know if I'm going to be able to kill this, you can use this with it to try and... Kind of give yourself some extra chances. I paid for 12 portals and I'm going to use them. <laughs> yep. Or um, just get more loot out, I guess, which... Yeah. I don't know if that's a problem necessarily that will uh, present itself very frequently, but... <laughs> we have a ritual one next. Selectiveness. Rerolling has no cost the first two times. And I love rerolling favors one additional time. Nice. Wow. Yeah. Straightforward. Limited to two again. So technically it could be the first four rerolls. Um and yeah. you can reroll two additional wow. times technically as well. Wow. Yeah, limit two. I love the the limit thing was such a good idea. That's huge. Yeah. I agree. It came in quite late in the process actually. Um like it was it was uh I don't know, probably a good two weeks of them being in a spot where we were doing first testing before we actually discussed doing that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but it was a great addition, and it was kind of so obvious as well. And yet again, we none of us really saw it until quite a bit in. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, 20 strong boxes, and I'm guessing Monstrous Treasure is still in the game, so you can have like 50, 60 strong boxes in a map now? Um, yes, it is. If you go forward one more, there is another, the, <laughs> is the monstrous treasure equivalent. Um, so yes, you can use them. You technically use three of the ambush, go the, so plus 15 on top of the containment one. Oh. Oh, but we, I haven't actually checked out the, uh, the new atlas, but do we still have the, um, special, the like shaping of the skies? For the special map crafts there, or are they gone? I actually didn't check. I we kept I think we removed Monstrous Treasure from that oh. because it's a scarab now. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm pretty sure that one is that. I think we still have that node. I could, I could be very wrong here. I we had so many discussions about this. Um, but yeah, now it, now Monstrous Treasure should be removed from that. I do remember specifically uh, talking about that one. Wow. Huh. That's very, oh, this, very interesting. This is, um, this is your monstrous treasure one here, effectively, yeah. Yeah, I would say a lot of people are asking if we have the 500% the quant thing still, but I don't know if you want to touch on that. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, you'll get Sorry. the full list later and we'll find out. I, I genuinely do not remember, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, 
I don't remember specifically removing it, but like pff, flip of a coin at this point again. Um, this is a just lot of changes. Like, yeah, it, honestly, it's too much to keep on top of myself. Like, I um, it's just I mean, it's so much. <laughs> um, I don't like. I still haven't even read the patch notes, by the way. Wow. Like, I don't, <laughs> Like, like there are just things that, are, that like the people will, I, there are still changes in there that I don't even know about and that's fine. And that's how things have to work, by the way. It's not like one person can know all of this yeah. while this is going on, while I'm working on two games at the same time. And, you know, it's, it's a lot. Um, but again, this is why I play as well, because I want to learn all the things that I don't know. And otherwise I'm making decisions based on information I don't know. And that's not good. Uh, so, yeah. Very good. Sulfite of the fumes, um, release enraging fumes. Monsters have 500% increased quantity and sulfite is guarded by monsters from the Azerite mine. There is a target limit. I know there's a limit on this one, so don't get your uh, reverse knockback stuff you know, like you might want to do it a little bit, but I don't think it's actually necessary. Um, but this one, this one's a bit, you know, you could argue promotes a different kind of play style because it's, Obviously, the more kind of just insta off screening you're doing, the less useful this one will be. So if you're kind of wanting to engage with this, because it on, it affects it in a radius around it, of course. Um, so yeah, it is pretty valuable, but in the same sense, you know, depending on your type of build, uh, you might be having a little bit of a hard time getting to really benefit from this one, which is a thing I like, by the way. I do like that certain things appeal to certain builds more than others. Um, I think it is where you have so much that is universally good for everyone, it is completely fine to have some things where someone feels like, if I play this, I get to utilize this one better than other players can. I think that is a generally a good thing. So this oh. is kind of one of those. That'll be very interesting to see what Empyrean and crew does with that. Um, <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> we have an Uber CRF next. All monsters are at least magic, and then we have the forty percent pack size. Wow! Yes, yes. Uh, so this one's a this one is more. I'm curious to see what that group does with this. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Uh, the map's kind of crash, isn't it? <laughs> um, maybe. We'll see. Hopefully not, but you never know. <laughs> oh, um, but yeah, awesome. the the next set of these. So these are, as you said, Uber uh, is in the file name. Um, these are all, you can see from the art, they're all a little bit special looking. These are all a little bit kind of more almost meta-like. Um, they don't really have any league association. They're kind of just meant to be about combining with other things to do. And you do not expect to run these all the time. Like you would have to be very, very, very wealthy. You can do it with trade. Anything is possible really. But like you're not going to be finding a lot of these. They will be rare. They will be expensive. And we have a we have a lot of these special scarabs. We have an additional six, so we'll move on to the next one. Um, okay, <laughs> off the nemesis. Nice. Ah, uh, yeah. So even though this at front face value seems like a, just a downside, um, the more modifiers they have, the more drops they drop, and the higher the probability they have for like those kind of reward mods. Even though we've gutted some of those, yeah. um they so yes they will they are harder but they also will drop more and better items well i was going to bring it up later i'm just curious um the gem xp and things like that was that like was that all very intentional and, and what was sort of the reasoning behind some of those well it was intentional but you could argue it was unintentional for it to do what it did um right. so i guess um this is the thing where okay so during the campaign it obviously had you could look at it as a win because it's now my gems are always at the level it needs to be. But often what was happening during the campaign is you just ended up with your mega list of gems down the right hand all in gray and you can't level them up because they're over leveling your character. Mm -hmm. That's not a good thing. That was certainly not intended. Um, on the other hand, obviously you get to end game and it's nice because now it feels like your gems are hitting level 20 more aligned with where they, you would want them to be. And I actually agree with that part, but um, I... I want to do some changes around here and I'm not exactly sure what to do. I haven't thought too much into this, but thinking about it now, like I would want it like, okay, imagine a world where, um, well, okay, maybe people are happy with this or not. I'm just going to put it out there actually. And I'm curious what you think as well. Should it be that your gems level all the way to level a hundred and even beyond that? And like, let's say 
current gem level 20 balance is put to gem level 18 and then we cap gems at say level 25 so like if you keep playing they keep leveling and like just as a random thought experiment like should we explore something like that because we've just been stuck we haven't changed this formula pretty much forever we've had gem level 20 yeah sure we added awakened gems and you got in power and light and etc but like should your characters and I, I get gear will continue to progress you but yeah should should your gems continue to level further than they do right now or should they hit a cap earlier like what is what are the thoughts there like i so genuinely curious. my initial thoughts is i don't like the idea i can see this being really good for somebody that does play a lot and stuff but it does create like a bit of a weird power imbalance as well like yes, it is very true. nice the way it works right now you get 21 you get your 21 gem like that's like i think it's already in a very good state um i definitely think it was a good thing so right now we were getting level 20 gems somewhere between level 90 if you were very lucky but at least before 93 so that you could flip your gems and and stuff like that reasonably and get them pretty quickly back up whereas before it was sometimes even like level 95 so it was like almost twice as slow. yeah i i agree i mean it didn't i guess it was balanced around we made so many incremental changes over time that allowed you to get less penalized xp for your character and because gems get non-penalized experience yeah. it ended up the case that you were getting higher and higher level and they were getting lower and lower level relative um so i could just see some adjustments being there necessary anyway and i could see that the rear mod was a kind of band-aid for that yeah it just didn't do it the way we intended so i will well i will i i certainly now have it because i did uh read a bunch of stuff about that i do have it on the list for at least 325 uh to kind of review you know reevaluate exactly when do we want a gem to hit level 20 ignoring that whole other feature aside that's just a thought experiment yeah. um which you know uh, but at least the hitting gem level 20, I do want to, and I would say like hitting that around the 90 to 92 mark is probably actually what I would consider to be around right. Um, yeah. so maybe yeah, lower I, the XP I, from 250 to hundred or something. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would, I would, yeah, we'll adjust it for sure. I, I could see, I mean, I'll discuss it with people and see what other people think and there might be something else, but. Um, I agree that uh, if your gems are hitting 20 at like 95, I'd say that's too late. Um, because I agree there there is enough in the game that you can do after that point, especially considering you have to live, often level many gems to 20 and you're just mm -hmm. doing that over and over to get for corruption outcomes and whatnot. Um, it's not like you don't have stuff to do. So if all of a sudden now, yeah, you have to level to over 100 to get a max level gem to then do blah, blah, blah. But yeah, and again, thought experiment, because in yeah. that world, you'd also remove all that other stuff and that makes things less interesting. So yeah, I mean, ultimately it's not great, but um, sure, that will be reevaluated. Cool. Uh, I can't say it's going to happen in the next two days, but uh, yeah. you never know. Yeah, maybe. Um, I mean, and, and for the thought experiment, I think a lot of us would rather see like more awakened gems. I think they're very interesting with how they like change builds, especially the ones that do have something uh, build enabling. And Yep. Just just Agreed. out of curiosity, um, have you ever thought about that like double corrupting a gem turns it white? Like that could be one of the outcomes. Uh, I mean, that is something we could probably consider doing at some point. I mean, that doesn't also have to be double corruption. It could be a different outcome somewhere else that you can right. do or something. But I, I mean, I see what you're like t making a gem be considered white or effectively saying it can go in any color. Yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a cool feature. It's nothing wrong. As long as it is like end game, very high end game, the thing you do kind of at the end to seal the deal. Um, on yeah, it doesn't have to be from the gem so, double corrupt, but it'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Um, all right. Off. Horned Scarab of Preservation. Wow. Okay. Um, hmm. This is the classic FOMO Scarab. Uh, yeah. Where now all of a sudden you don't want to use any other Scarab unless you have this. Yeah. But thankfully it's so rare that that is improbable to actually happen. Um, I understand. Like the rarity of this is why it is allowed to exist. Um, it is highly improbable that you're going to like well, there might be some people who are going to hold on to other the other ones until you have this. 
Um, but then again, you are juicing your map less. And if you're using all these other Uber Scarabs, you are aiming for maximum juice. So yes, you you might want to actually use this. But then again, like getting these is going to be absurdly expensive and absurdly rare to the point where like, you know, that's effectively like saying I'm not going to, I mean, I don't know what the actual comparative drop weighting is, but it's effectively like saying like, no, nah, I'm not going to run my best Scarabs unless I have a mirror. And it's like, well, at some point you're just holding on to something for no real purpose. Like you're not. You're not you have, going to be able to reasonably do that. So. You have not watched me play Skyrim. I never use potions or anything until like the very end. It's, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> well, yeah, some people might, but um, yeah, a little bit of controversy about this one. But I think it is ultimately as powerful as it can get, and as like, yeah, I, I agree, it does that. But again, it's and it's also affecting like we're talking pinnacle of pinnacle kind of tiers of mapping and juicing and whatnot. And it so. does take up a slot. Yes, it does. Yes, it, it has an opportunity cost, of course. Yeah. Um, cool. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, worst case scenario, you could even nerf it that has a limit of two and 50%. Oh, that wouldn't work. Never mind. Uh, ignore that. We'll move on to the next one. <laughs> I mean, you could just make it 50% and keep it as is and make it less rare, uh, which yeah. is a potential, like if, like, if it doesn't work, then that's uh, on the cards. Um, but we'll see. So this one we you showed in the video already. Ah, uh, yes. So, but I wanted to explain it a little bit. But I yeah. mean, I guess yeah. I mean, it was kind I've of. I've been asked a lot of but, questions about this too. Um, so, so this pretty much for every league, uh, it gives a duplicated version of it on the crafting bench, uh, and it gives that league and then some extra thing. So it's effectively like if you want to actually min max your leagues, that's the way to do it. The second function it serves is that it can be used uh, to nullify, as in the prefixes and suffixes will have no effect. That includes the quantity, rarity, pack size, and the downside. Um, but it, I saw that as primarily a, you want to use that on tier 17s when you have modifiers that you can't. Uh, so you can use it to juice leagues, or you can use it to run tier 17s that you, your build normally couldn't. Hmm. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen too often. I suspect more than likely you'd just trade or swap it with someone. Or just try and overcome the challenge or adapt your build a little bit. But the option's still there. Um, what I do feel is it might be too rare to actually utilize it for that reason. Um, and in which case, I could see a future in where we split this out into a separate, that functionality to separate scarabs. And we, um, and we use, like, because maybe that you want to be able to do that more often. Um, so it might have been it might be that having this have the two functions is a bad decision, but um we'll see how that plays effectively and see. But it also has like the capability for a scarab to add more crafting bench options is something that we can have design space around in the future as well for doing just whatever else we want to be able to do. Um but yeah, effectively it's for super juice leagues or to be able to run tier seventeens that you normally couldn't be able to run. I wouldn't expect you to ever waste it on something below tier seventeen. Yeah, because uh, a concern some people had with this was that aren't you only ever going to use this for just one thing? Because it will be rare and expensive, so you'll only use it for its most expensive purpose? Um, Quite probably, yes. Uh, which isn't necessarily a problem. Um, but I, I agree that that is not entirely ideal. Um, but again, future changes are certainly possible. And again, we can always balance up and down those things. Like That kind of implies... Well, we don't know what the meta is going to be for end game. We don't know what people are going to necessarily use it for. Yeah. Um, and there certainly are players who aren't just like, I'm going to use it for that. But yes, it will be economically priced around that, and thus they will sell it yeah. for that. I, I get, I get yeah. all that. Again, these aren't necessarily problems because, at the very least, what it means is that when you find it, you are like, yes, I just got a bunch of money. Uh, that's like in game currency. That's true. That is a uh, valuable a valuable thing to have, right? Like at the end of the day, I hoping the scarabs have added a lot more dopamine to uh, drops in, in game, just world drops, right? Like you're just playing and now you have a lot more opportunities to find something worth a lot. Uh, hopefully it ends up being that way. And have we been told yet where these, like the special scarabs drop from? Oh, just world drops. Oh, okay, cool. Even those, okay. Yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Awesome. I am a huge proponent of world drops. Awesome. I, uh, I think it's, I, I mean, I, even changing the, I don't, I, the whole like double, two and a half times in the drop rates of the extreme uniques and pulling back on the yeah. stack decks and random div card and stuff is like, I, 
I want to farm my maps and get things and not have it to be that like most of them are coming from these random other sources that I am choosing not to do. Because again, it has an impact on choosing that is the game's there is an inevitability to this, but that is the game choosing how I play the game because yeah. how can you not be economically focused? You can not be, but most people are. Um, and so the moment that that's happening, uh, where it's like, you should play this league because of this, and that's the max best way to get to these, um, and then you feel obliged to do it, like, I don't like that because I want to play the game the way I want to play it, and I want the game, everyone to play the game they want to play it. And yeah, I, I understand that that is often not entirely the case but i will always strive to try and make that the case um it's just that that is often not very possible yeah uh, just due to like metas balance information sharing it, it's a very hard thing to do but at the very least i don't want it to be that you feel so pressured to do a single thing that you like that everything else is completely out of the, off the cards and so yeah play yeah. The, the big thing with the end game this one sorry one more thing is just no, get I want you to play the game. You, I want you to play the game the way you want to play the game. Um, and so this is the whole, uh, you know, the thing I'm talking about with the scrying orb goes further down that line. I want you yeah. to play what map you want to play. The multiple trees. I want you to play what leagues you want to play. I want you to play. I want, if you want to do bosses or not, I want you to play it that way. I, because that's how I want to play it as well. And I don't ever want to be forced to do a single thing or feel forced to do a single thing. Um, now it's easy said for me because. Uh, I, if I force, if I feel forced to do something, I just go like, why did I do this to myself? Uh, whereas <laughs> obviously everyone else is, uh, why are you doing this to me? So yeah, I don't want that to be the case. So, wow. yep. yeah, no, like the reason I asked was because they were named Uber and there were seven of them. I was like, are these Uber only drops? But yeah, cool. Right. Cool. That they're world drops. Uh, co yeah. Co coincidence. <laughs> we designed more than seven. We just didn't get to the time to make more than oh, seven. Okay. So. You might see some future. Well, you might see some ones coming through. Very cool. So we'll be potentially getting more. Um, I did open. Uh, a certainly at, at some point. Yeah. I did open horns. Also, the scarab tab is going to be massive. <laughs> That's going to be a big one. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, damn. I was meant to have a picture of it. Uh, the way it's actually sorted is like uh, this kind of like sets of three at the top, then sets of four for the ones that, because there's some that are leagues or pieces of content that have three. And then at the bottom, there's the sevens, but each of the little sets has the league symbol next to it. So you can kind of more easily identify uh, the type of content they belong to. We can yeah. post a picture of it later. Um, it is a lot more readable than it was I think we have before one. even and it is now. Oh yeah. I think Nick's sending through some pictures there. I don't know if you can bring them up or whatever, but at some point um, might be oh. a bit hard to fit into your. Yeah, no, I can um yeah it is very large let's see i'm just gonna save it there uh, someone posted it uh, i can't see i can't see the names of who posted them but i put oh, yeah. oh, i was in a video so some oh, yeah, i come from chat because it was in a video um yeah here's some the, um, here oh, i was probably in the video yesterday um, maybe i don't know yeah anyway very cool yeah um is there a concern that this tab is going to be borderline mandatory? Is that something that you guys have discussed? Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's something we've discussed. Um, right, 109 item slots. I mean, we at least increased the stack size, but certainly, yeah, the stash tab stuff is a little bit kind of like, obviously in that controversial space, I generally try and kind of stay out of that, but I understand why I sh probably shouldn't. Um, we definitely, I understand the level of like necessity our um, stash tab purchasing kind of is in that realm. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty, you could argue a lot of our special ones are kind of in that mandatory territory right now for sure. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, like, I don't know what, I don't know. I haven't really formulated much of an opinion on that one myself, but I'll think about that. Actually, I will bring that up and evaluate with how we feel about that. But I suspect the answer is that we're kind of okay with it, but, um, yeah. uh, never know. It, this is the, uh, this is the age of questioning original philosophies, um, for sure. And kind of questioning where we're going. And especially with POE2 and the works, like it is like 
the amount of stuff that we are bringing up, discussing and questioning is is kind of boundless right now. So I'm just going to add it to the list of things that we should make sure that we're actually happy with. Cool. Yeah, I was just curious. Um, it's so cool how much stuff you're revisiting and uh, rethinking. We have... yeah, I, I think it is important. I don't want to be that like, you know, the... I don't want to be one of those like back in my day we had to do something blah 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 you know what i mean like i'm yeah. i'm all about trying to not be the old dinosaur kind of thing and uh get phased out like i've certainly i i always try and push to make sure that things are but there are some things like door opening where you know you're not you know you might consider me a dinosaur there but um <laughs> i still have i still have some beliefs that won't change at least yet but you never know yeah no um I think I can't remember. It might have been Chris or somebody that said the players are very good at identifying what's wrong, but not always how to fix it. If I remember who said that. Oh, that's yeah, that's true of most things in life, really. Um, yeah, it is. That's the classic. Um, give them what they need, not what they want, as well in game development, which is pretty important. Um, it's very easy to always just like it can be pretty brutal in a um situation where you you do cave and just to do the thing that is wanted and you do cave on your philosophies and forever regret it and never be able to undo it and so it is important to really take the time actually identify the problem and actually give the solution that is right and yeah. an example of that going wrong was the like left mouse button thing right like straight up that is a like rush to decision where we did not give it enough time and give it enough thought and as such the conclusion is bad um that isn't necessarily to say we're giving people what they wanted. That's not, a, it's a little bit different, but what I'm saying is like, if you don't give it enough proper time and actually consider it and give it enough time for testing and iteration and let people feel it out. And some of those things you can't go back on. Like I know that's people might not necessarily believe that, but it is one of those things where if you increase like the item pickup range, we cannot reduce it ever. Like that is it. It is stuck there now forever. Um, and so you cannot get that wrong because if it's now wrong, you just have to deal with it. And it sucks to work on something where you're just like, I made this mistake and now it has hindered this forever and we just have to deal with it. And you constantly have this memory in your head of just like, this just doesn't feel good because you, you made a, you've kind of made a mess out of it effectively. So right. anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but we can just move no, on. From it's good. <laughs> that was one of the things I wanted to talk about as well, because the community has been asking about it a lot is uh, since you aren't happy with the, the solution at the moment, have you thought about temporarily reverting it until you find a solution that you are happy with? Well, again, I am happy. I am happier. I, I do still believe, and I have covered this a bit, that this is the lesser of evils. Um, but, and we have done some changes around that and whatnot, and that is cool and good. But um, I would like to do a better solution later for sure where it becomes not evil at all. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I stick by that. I believe it is currently in a better state. Um, and yeah, I, if it wasn't, if I didn't actually believe that, and if the others here didn't believe that as well, um, and I'm not saying everyone here believes that, but you know, a good set of people, and we've discussed it. If I didn't believe that, I would revert it, like okay. genuinely. I would. We would straight up put that back to what it was, and then we would take our time and do the proper solution. Cool. Uh, a lot of people are not going to agree with me on that one, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I would just say play it and try it and see how you actually feel and how it actually um, adapts your builds, because that is one insight that we have that you do not currently have. I know theoretical is often just as good as practical, but in this case, I don't know. See how you feel about it, because it might be like two weeks down the line after playing, or one week or one day. You, it's completely out of sight, out of mind, and you don't feel any different about it one way or another, and it's like... I would put it as another phrase or another way of like, uh, I know this isn't a great because it's a bit of a cop out, but there are much bigger fish to fry. Um, and so it's kind of like, would you really, would do you want us to be solving that? Or do you want us to be solving, uh, you know, some other mega problem that I won't necessarily say right now, like trade. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> so you, say. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, like, I want to pick our battles wisely and doing the, this fix the right way is going to take a decent amount of resources. Effectively, what I like to do, just to give a bit of insight there, is I write, I like to gather all the problems. I put them all on a board and I kind of write like, here are my tier one problems, my tier two problems, my tier three problems, and kind of like, okay, we have enough to do this, 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 and this. Is this the right set of things we should be fixing this time or changing this time? 
Um, and then, but then you see all these other things that you don't have time for and you're like, oh, they'd be so good to fix, like so good. So you kind of try and get them in there anyway. And then you end up with overworking and over scoping and causing a problem. And so like that can have a, a pretty negative impact as well, obviously yeah. when you, cause now you're doing stuff without giving them the time. And so like, but do rest assured we are doing like everything possible that we can. And I am trying to actually make sure that the problems being addressed are, I do believe, and others believe here are the most important problems that we should be fixing. Not everyone will agree that every problem has the same level of importance. Yeah. Um, and that's just where it comes in. And obviously that's where the QOL bingo is very useful. Yeah, we're, um, we are going to talk about that after the solutions. We'll get to that one, yes. Um, but anyway, we can continue with the scarabs. I know. Okay. Yeah, I, I like to rant and tangents. So. No, it's great. I think people are really enjoying this. It's, a, it's, it's very, I'm enjoying it a lot. Horned Scarab of Tradition. All rare monsters in the area have at least one reward modifier. Uh, players modifier to item rarity and item quantity do not apply. Yeah, so I wanted this one to be like, you know, you obviously... This one you could use without feeling obliged to have to run a magic find character. Because otherwise you would be like, I'm obviously going to save this until I'm an MFA. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that whole, you know, yeah. holding out on that one until you are. So, yep, we just pretty much went with the, like, give something super rewarding, but also make it that any player feels like they can do it and they don't need to run some MF strat in order to do it or MF build in order to do it, which I think is pretty cool. So... Question. It does say player modifiers. Does that mean if you're in a six man group, that will work? Uh, yes, that will work. Yeah, yeah, sure. Aren't you worried that you'll sort of have the same problem? Like, I won't run this solo. I'll feel forced to run it in a six man group. Um, well, that can be said about mostly everything, I guess. Like, you could argue one way. Like, it is the case that in a like you get the most out of your map there. I agree with you. And again, mm -hmm. this does have opportunity cost. Your map is not as juiced as it was. So like you can argue whether or not it's better. Um, but that can be said about the whole game. Like, is it better to run multiple people or is it better to run solo? That is an eternal argument. Um, and I don't necessarily think it's necessarily one way or another. Um, like coming from the aura bot guy here, um, <laughs> I obviously like running in parties. Yeah. And then you know what happens? We get like a little bit later into the league and my f friends are all, you know, fully decked out in gear. And all of a sudden, all I'm doing is following around an immortal, completely powerful character that has no reason, no issue killing anything anyway. And I am now getting 70, well, 50% of the drops of which is, you know, it goes up by what, like 31% quantity and some rarity per player. And then that's divided by two. So like now he's getting 40% less drops because I'm getting my portion and he's probably thinking like, fuck, get out of here. I don't want you with me. Like, you know, but at the start of the league, they're like, oh yeah, run support, come help us out. And then like a week later, it's like, can you just go away? I don't want you here. You're taking my items that I don't need you for. So there's like, for someone who knows, you know, that benefit, it is certainly the case that, uh, you know, I end up being a hindrance because I'm taking someone's loot. So, you know, I, there is an eternal debate here and I'm not again going to say it's perfect or where it should be right yeah. now by any means. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know if people will hold off on that one for that, but I mean, uh, if they do, they do, I guess is also yeah. a thing. Um, I was just curious. Yeah. That was a great answer. Um, we have two more, actually we have three more scarabs. Um, of glittering. Huh. Recently. So this, this is kind of like that, um, Whakawairua Tuahu map, which yeah. I'm sure most people don't know how to pronounce. Though I think I heard people calling it the Waka Laka Laka map and stuff like that. <laughs> um, it's like that, but obviously without the light radius, it initially had the light radius in it. And then I was like, oh no, no, no. Like now everyone's just going to be running, saving this until they have their maxed out light radius build. Um, so even though that sounds fun, I don't think it's right for kind of core content like this. So, yeah. um, this is one again, that is like, yeah, if you're a magic find character, um, you obviously, this still benefits you, but you are so deep into diminishing returns that it won't be, uh, as useful. Uh, however, if you're not running a magic find build, this is obviously going to be far more useful for you and kind of same principle. So we tried to focus on some that are like, can be used by any player as opposed to just like following the whole dead eye magic find build meta kind of shenanigans. Um, that will still probably happen, but yeah, uh, That's at cool. least these can be used to kind of really take your, like, I want to get as much as possible and I'm confident that I'm not going to die six times and run 
yeah um, you know either or these or i guess both together with them I do want to potentially prompt a tangent here, but I'm, I'm really curious since I saw it says recently, and recently it's not too bad, but nearby can be a little bit convoluted. Like instead of having a number on it, it's like every nearby is different. Uh, nearby. I mean, <laughs> it's almost a bit of a meme at this point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it um, is. I think it's like, nearbys are consistent within a given context now nah, in fact i don't even want to say that you know what i actually don't know um I, I would say that like is this how much of a problem is this really uh i mean it's not contextual to this one obviously uh to the scarab i don't know yeah. if any of the scarabs have anything nearby um and then you're getting a bit of the like in your presence is another thing you have which is like what does that mean as well and how is that not nearby um but yeah, I agree. There's some weird inconsistencies there. I think, so Mark 1, uh, the other Mark, handles, I'm Mark 2, by the way. We get numbers here. We uh, There's no Mark 3 yet, thankfully. Uh, and then some people, you know, we have, Mark and I have had a long feud of, um, I, I say the Mark 2, the upgrade is better. And he thinks that the classics are always truer to the core. And so him and I, are, you know, we're at contentions about who's the better Mark. Um, I would just say we're... <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll never know, but um, uh, he's the one that handles a lot of the descriptions. He's the one you see on Reddit doing all the explanations for how mechanics work and all that. Mm -hmm. Like that guy is a hub of knowledge, and um, uh, I think he also is like you know working the best he can with the designers requesting shenanigans, which of course I include myself in that. Where it's like, nah, I want this one to be forty, and he's like, oh my god, here we go. Um, and then another one, it was like, or let's say like 60 is too high and we have to nerf it. So it gets lowered or something's too, needs to be a bit bigger. And then it's like, now you can't use nearby, but you still kind of want to, because otherwise now the descriptions are getting a bit out of control. And, you know, I, I, look, imperfection is certainly the case, but it falls under the category of like bigger fish to fry again. Yeah. Um, like these aren't just immediately solvable and they may have an impact on balance. It may okay. seem very, very, very easy. And that is true. But like even like a couple of hours of work has a cost, you know, yeah. like we don't, we are working full time. We don't just have infinite resources and people that can handle all the stuff. And so, um, you know, one day I'm sure that we will get around to it. No, in fact, I'm not even sure about that. One day we will <laughs> hopefully get around to that, but, um, it kind of is what it is for now. Awesome. Um, seventh scarab. This is the last one is that is Uber horn scarab of pandemonium. Wow. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is the same deal where they do get the drops and the extra map bosses, uh, the extra, like, the, you know, the map drops and the guardian drops and all of that as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what that bottom line does indicate. So, wow. That's it's a lot. Yes. That's so cool. Some map bosses everywhere. Wow. Should be pretty fun. I'm pretty sure it's ran. Yeah, it is. This one actually indicates random where that other one didn't, which makes me think. Like they work differently, but I have a suspicion it's just someone did the descriptions on one and not, and someone else did it on the other. Yeah. I will verify that after this and make sure that they actually are either intentionally working differently or uh, will yeah. be made more consistent descriptively. And here we have the last scarab. Oh, air contains the nameless seer. Yeah, because why not? Because why not? <laughs> Um, obviously, so, obviously they don't cost dust because there isn't any dust. It's just he'll give you one, and uh, like I think in Affliction, it took all of your dust away when you bought it. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it will just you'll be able to pick one. Um, it's not completely random unique. So it is like it has some sort of biasing to make it so that like more uh, rarer ones are more likely to be there and stuff like that. So it is a better than normal unique item. It's not just plus one random unique. Awesome. That was that was all the scarabs. We got through them. Wow, there's so many, and there are more coming too. So we haven't even seen all of them yet. Uh yeah, there are 109 total. Um, and I think what was that, like 30 or something? Yeah. Filled with a whole bunch of my rants in between. That's crazy. I I love how many different ones and how much like player autonomy we're getting uh over the game there and agency. Like very cool. Um, is there what we're about to move on from teasers? Is there anything else you want to tease or talk about before we move on to the next um, topic? 
I think I got through most. I did want to go over like some of the Gravecraft stuff. I know. Yeah, I, that's uh, the next one. We can one. go over that. Just technically, some of that. So we could just get into that. Is all good, and I'll explain how some of that works. And uh, <clears throat> um, kind of it starts to kind of show how powerful it can be. Um, so let's see where that goes. Um, cool. I, think I, got I will. Of that as well. I will probably. Yeah, I'll start by loading the image of that, and then we can talk about the league mechanic and things like that. Sure, let me need to resize sure it a mine. bit find it also that way i don't have to deal with any forms of stream delay and whatnot okay See. i've got it too all right i mean we can just go top down but um i'll give a bit of background on just like the league itself so um you ultimately as you uh kill uh, monsters that are haunted which you can kind of configure when you create uh, an area during this league yeah um you can uh they harder monsters and uh you can get them to become collectible so they're there are special looking ones and when they die um they can be collected and the undertaker comes out and takes them back to the necropolis um stores them in the morgue and then you can go back there and do some um crafting i will point out i'm gonna uh, there's a couple changes here um so yeah huh. you can store a limited mount in the necropolis but the first thing I notice is on the top left, you've got an 11 out of 27, assuming we have the same image. Oh dear. That 27 um, is the capacity, but we have actually just expanded that. I think it's like 60 now or something. So um, you okay. can store a lot. And because we were having annoying pressure, um, I like, you want some pressure. You don't want to have infinite storage. Um, you want to feel like you should engage with it or itemize them and trade them. Um, but that's another thing you'll notice is like a lot of leagues we don't release with things like itemizing crafts and itemizing the capacity to trade them um and we just end up with like a um a pressure and then you kind of just have to engage with the trading except you feel it might feel lossy or you're missing out we yeah. tried to kind of make sure that you can trade them you can itemize them and you can deal with all that and we've also um due to the like you know making sure this was on alpha and we got a bunch of feedback there uh we have increased the storage size recently uh apparently between when i um took the screenshot and now which i think probably was yesterday, um, we've increased that maximum storage limit to like 60 or something like that. So you can have 60 collected corpses, uh, crafts at a given time. Uh, might be 50 something, I don't know, some number around there. Yeah. So how, um, how often are you anticipating that you go into a crafting session? Um, so it, it's early in the game, it's quite, it's a lot more frequent. Um, because uh, you uh, okay, you're, you're just wanting rare items and you don't really engage too much with what the mods are actually doing. There are some ones where it's like uh, effectively sets the minimum links to X and Y to help with sockets while going through the game. Um, more like sets minimum to four, minimum to five and stuff like that. There is stuff like that. Um, but you aren't caring too much about what they're doing early in the game as you're progressing through. But like if you just want a targeted rare item at any point, yeah. you just go make it. So if you want a better, if you think your amulet's weak, just you can go literally craft one corpse at a time. Um, during the live stream, we had a uh, like, uh, I know this is a concern some people have brought up, but when you craft, he, the guy obviously appears and reads his whole dialogue out, and it's real epic, and his voice is awesome and all that. But it's also like, okay, why are you telling me I got to wait like six, eight seconds? I don't even nine seconds. I think it was for each craft. Um, so we've done like a short version. So if you're doing less than I think five corpses it does a short version and if you're doing more it does the longer version um so he cuts half the dialogue out and he just reads the last like the punchline so to speak um so at least like we've made it more efficient there um but you still want that little bit of time to give a little bit of suspense to be like especially when you're doing like 50 graves at once and you're like oh my god this needs to be the best item ever like please 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 because it isn't deterministic, it will be. I'm sure people were going to find effectively deterministic ways to get things, but that's fine. Break it as much as you want. Um, but you want that, like, please, 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 please be good. And so you get that, like, bit where you're, like, sweating and you're just like, oh, my God, I'm using it. This is, like, a hundred divines worth of corpses I'm using here. Like, please be good. And then it comes out and maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And there's that moment where you mouse over it and you have that, like, kind of, you know, your heart stops for, yeah. like, a little bit. So I like that. I like that kind of pre-craft stress which is way more dramatic than just like hit craft and the item immediately changes to some other state and then you can immediately see the difference like it adds way more drama but i don't want that to be the case when you're like just spamming single items so yeah we've done a short version 
uh, just for that. So anyone worried about that from the live stream, uh, be less worried. You could still argue it's not short enough, but um, I yeah, that, maybe that more changes gonna... can be made. But... That was going to be my follow-up question. If this is something that people don't like and, you know, if they've done this for like a month and it's like, wow, I'm getting really tired of these animations when we're crafting like 2,000 items, is that something you would be open to? Like either like a toggle to skip that or? Um, the way it's set up, skipping it is hard, but it can be done. But I don't think I want that because I like that suspense and I don't know if it will. I don't want to do it based on a theoretical problem yet. Um, like if that is a problem, we will adjust it. Um, mm -hmm. I actually find it's quite like you're not just like I'm going to do a hundred things, do a craft, and then immediately I, like do another hundred. Right? You have to collect all the corpses or at least yeah. trade for them all. There is to do really good items. There is going to be a decent amount of time between them, and so we're talking now. You're like sacrificing nine seconds every x, like you know, some large number of maps. It's kind of like the, yeah. the it's the proportion that matters. Whereas if you're sacrificing nine seconds every single time you do one item with one grave, like that's a problem, hundred percent. So, um, I don't know. Just see how it is, and then uh, I'll either respond with here's a fix, or I'll, I'll either respond with a deal with it, and we'll see where that goes. Um, probably more so we'll adjust it because, I, <laughs> why not? Yeah. Um. Oh. However, um. Okay, so these graves, I mean, uh, yeah, so you get collecting corpses, the harder the modifier and uh, the more likely that they will yield a collectible corpse. Um, so making the league harder gives you more crafts uh, and making the league easier gives you less crafts. Um, so there is, uh, but obviously making it easier has other the benefit of being easier. Um, so yeah, there is a, you can control your own difficulty, but you want to make it harder to get more of these. Yeah. So that's just some very preliminary context into them. And so what we've got here is a number of crafts. Um, if, I guess if we go to the top and look at the physical plus 100 to physical modifier tier rating. So okay. that's a little bit confusing. Um, and we've gone through so many different versions of this trying to figure out how to make it less. The way that works, so plus 100 will mean that the bottom 50% of physical modifiers will not be able to roll on the item. Oh. Uh, so you have obviously your tier one, you have your merciless, your tyrannical, etc., all the way down. Forget the names of all the others. The bottom half will not be able to... I, I, on your stream, you might want to... Yeah, uh, get I've done it. Yeah, there you go. Um, uh, yeah, the bottom half will not roll and it makes the other ones more common. Um, so, but not, it's like kind of proportionately more common. It's not like that waiting loss goes into the waiting directly. It's kind of like, right. um, it's a little bit nebulous, but ultimately it does cut off bad mods. And this is something obviously people have been asking for with a lot of stuff. So this yeah. is us kind of trying it out, um, so that you can't get your like plus five life where everything else is T1. Uh, this is a way to get around that. Um, so yeah, if you run enough of those, you can cut off everything, but, uh, you can cut off everything but Tyrannical and Merciless, for example, but that still doesn't mean you will get it. It just means that that is the only option if the uh, IPD was to roll, but they still have a waiting. The waiting is still all mods consider their waitings together, so it's not like it becomes deterministic. Yeah. Um, but it, what it does, the determinism means you won't get a bad one if you got one, um, which is cool, and you can do that for like a lot of them. Uh, so there's plus 50s and plus 100s. Plus 50 will cut off the bottom third, plus 100 will cut off the bottom 50%. And then if you did another plus 100, you cut off the bottom two thirds and then so on and so forth. So it's compressing them up, up into a point. Um, there's some like kind of, I guess, nuances around that where it's kind of like, at some point cutting off to rent, you probably actually want to only cut off, I know this is like some advanced player mathematical yeah. stuff. You, you probably only want to cut off up until, uh, Tyrannical, so keeping Tyrannical and Merciless, because if you cut off Tyrannical, um, Merciless is so rare that like you still probably won't get it. So if you want like, but if you're looking for best in slot, like you still want to, this is still your way to get it. We're certainly doing some internal mega grave crafts and you're getting multi, like triple T1s and whatnot. Like it is certainly very plausible, um, but it takes a fair while. And this is the one thing I really like. So a lot of the crafts are um, binary, but a lot of the crafts are like, you want to stack as many as you can to get the highest probability to get this thing. And you might just be like, nah, I want to get five more. If I get five more, I'll be comfortable. And then like you get five more and you're like, 
I don't know. I'm still not. I'll get a few more. I'll get a few more just in case, just to damn well make sure I can't, you know, I get this thing or I can't get that thing. And um, and then there are some which are more deterministic. Yeah. Um, and some of the others are pretty crazy in here. Um, cool. So yeah, that's how that top one works. Um, I was wondering how is all of this going to work in a group? Um, I think we have it. I, I'm going to double check all this because we went through a number of iterations, but I think it's the classic, like when you collect it, um, everyone has a like 50% chance to get a random other one, um, or something like that, which I obviously now brings into my mind. Like if you're, I know when your necropolis is full or nearly full, he comes out whenever you collect a corpse and then you can talk to him and like itemize them or cremate some stuff or whatnot. So we, I need a, I need a, I actually want to go double check how that works because in party I could see a case of like, you're not getting your bonus ones and you're unaware because it's full. I think it does output in text as well. That is like your thing is full, like, or it's getting close. I'll, I'll just double check all of that's there, but and I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's the classic, like a lot of leagues do that. Like essences, for example, they just have a chance to drop a bonus one for each party member and stuff yeah. like that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't give the exact same one though. I'm pretty sure. But again, I will add that to the list. We'll add that to the list of like things I should go verify afterwards. Um, uh, you... Just because we go through so many iterations yeah. and I can't remember exactly where we land. But I always, I'm the, I'm the aura bot guy. I try and make sure the leagues work in a party. And <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> uh, when they when they don't, I get sad. And uh, you mentioned you like getting full. Is this something? Can we delete bad ones, or do we have to pay one chaos to delete one? Uh, uh, nice. you can, there'll be a little flame symbol so you can cremate the corpse. Okay. Uh, you can nice. just click that here. <laughs> awesome. Um, and you can do that, and you can do that in the necropolis in your hideout and in the and in areas. You can, he can come in. He comes in when they're nearly full. You can bring up this UI and you can you have a little cremate symbol next to all. Um, but uh, and then or you can go to the necropolis and do it while looking at them on the table, or you can do it in your you can invite him to your hideout and do it from there as well. So, awesome. um. You can do it pretty much from everywhere. Yeah. And another thing, like, I don't want to, there, there's so many things for still have to do the bingo look, go through too. Um, so I'm trying to be a little um, bit I'm, conscious of time here. I'm, but, still good on, I'm still good on time. I'm, I'm awesome. pretty happy to just keep going. So, okay. That's more than happy to do that. Um, what I wanted to ask, there's a lot of like unique, different stats that we, um, haven't seen and, um, we can still influence these afterwards like those items are rares and um use it either eldritch currency or exalted herbs etc uh yes you can can you i don't see why you wouldn't it creates the item uh it should be that you can do that it might i think it might be that some of the mods are in the same family so if you can say for example get plus one charges from this i think then that but is in the same mod family as we call it as um uh plus one charges from influence so you might not be able to get like double up on that but yeah. i'm actually not too sure if they went with that way or not but i'm i feel like probably it is going to be that way i'm just not a hundred percent certain but um there's no restriction on uh doing that so yeah and what we've we've got like a, one of the crafts is like plus one ethics and yeah we are finding that like end game you you actually don't want to use like you generally craft four or five FX items so you can then do some level of manipulation to them afterwards. Oh, cool. um, that's certainly a thing that is happening. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's what I was mm -hmm. thinking. Um, I think we move on to tier 17s. Uh, we can. I, I, there's a couple more things on okay. here. If we, we can, can, we can talk more so, about the league mechanic. Um, obviously, belt is a Stygian vice. I'll just have go through some stuff. Yes, you can customize the base types. We have that for heist weapons, the minion rings, uh, minion weapons and stuff there. You can see um, the Stygian vice one has an orange border. It's not meant to. Um, that's oh, okay. only for the unique ones. That's a bug. Um, I We fixed that yesterday, but again, I was like, I can't be bothered taking another screenshot. Uh, the, the way you get those is from the itemized packs. So... There are like itemized abyss monsters, uh, itemized yeah. packs that all flame members. You put them in, but you can get one that it drops exclusively from abyss content. I think maybe only from depths, and oh. that one will be the one that can give you this. So you, there's a couple of, and same with the experimented weapon. That pack, that all flame member can only drop from heist content. So some of them are like you really want to, um, you want to like you know, you, there are rewards for running different types of content that um, are kind of subtle in the league. Um, and then I'm just going to explain a couple others. So if we go mm -hmm. down, um, 
some of these are pretty self-explanatory, but we'll look at the um, 20% chance to create a mirrored copy. Yeah. So that can, obviously, you can put five of them, you get 100. Huh. But if you put 10 of them, you can get 200, and now you get three of the item and so on and so forth. So if you're doing your like ultra epic crafts, there's always these things where you want to like put as many as possible to get as many as you can out of it. Um, again, it might be a bad item or it might be the best item ever and now you've got a whole bunch of them. Wow. Um, same with fracture. So that's like you put four of them, one mod's fractured. If you put another one, it's one mod's fractured with a 25% chance of a second mod fractured, so on and so forth. You can just get it with all six mods are fractured or whatever you want to do there. So... Um, some of these, again, you want to be planting a lot of them or burying a lot of them if you want to, um, you know, ensure you get kind of the best results. Uh, and you can easily see how you can fill up the entire kind of graveyard of, we've added more graves lately, but it's like nearing like 80 to 100 kind of territory of graves that you want to do. And like, you know, so you could be easily, you could be doing a project pretty rarely, or if you're trading, you could be doing these projects a lot more frequently. That's so cool. Um, but again, yeah. And so we're going to be mad scientists this league. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping... I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be broken in some way, like, of course, and I like that, and I'm happy, completely happy with that. Um, there might be some level of broken that we'll have to be like, oh, yeah, nah, this is not okay. Um, but um, we'll see. But, um, yeah, I'm very keen to see what people are going to get out of this. Um, there's all kinds of meta ones as well. Like, in here, there's, like, one that's, like requires at least one other corpse of the same monster name to get a vermilion ring so that's kind of like and i don't mean name as in like the randomly generated name that's just like uh you know you get a devourer you or need a second devourer and oh. uh, when you, you plant that and then you plant another devourer that has or whatever if that vermilion ring one drop with a devourer and now it'll create a vermilion ring and obviously the uh, ones that override the base type are uh, mutually exclusive um it's meant to prevent you from planting thing uh, burying things that are going to like conflict so if you have a bone ring one down already you then can't also put down a minion wand one uh that is what it's meant to be and the same yeah. with like if you plant put down the unique ones you're not meant to be able to also then change the unique to a bone ring because that will do nothing um because the unique is a specific unique and not a random unique wow it's gonna be not so that. fun to look at like the different stuff people come up with and videos about different combos um oh, sure all right, well, I mean, that's enough there. We can move on to whatever yeah. you want to now. I'm pretty pretty happy with... Yeah, next up we have um, mm -hmm. Tier 17 drops and stuff. Um, a lot of people have been asking a little bit more about, like, specifically how they're obtained. Like, we, we are not going to be running them permanently, right? Unless um, you're buying them. Well, again, trade. Um, yeah. Permanently is no, right? A Tier 17 cannot drop a Tier 17. Yeah. So they're not self-sustaining, um, and that is intentionally by design. Um, tier 17s, obviously there are, like, the mods might be too hard and stuff. There are factors as to why you might not be able to run them or might be able to, or maybe you save them for a different build or a different character, or maybe you trade them away or whatever. There are going to be ones, or you use that scarab and, you know, you get around some mods, or you change your build, you know, there's all of that. But then there are, uh, so there's the drops. So void stones are the things that give you the chance for them to upgrade. Yeah. Um, now we display, we showed them at 0.5% per, 0.5% chance per socketed void stone, which is kind of effectively how grand spectrums work. Um, now I think it's been lowered to 0.4, but I'll explain where our intention is uh, with how many you're getting uh, shortly. But the way that works is, so it's not 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4 plus 0.4. Plus 0.4. Um, each one, so the first one is 0.4, uh, then the second one is, uh, 0.4 times two plus <laughs> 1.6. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, however, whatever that math goes. Um, so it ends up with, uh, when it was at 0.5, it was 8%. So two, uh, 0.5, then two, then four, then eight. So yeah, times, uh, four, then two, then two, I guess. Um, so you end up with like a whatever math. Someone in chat can do that math for me. Um, 1.6 times I'm, I'm in my thirties now. 6. I don't get to do that stuff quickly. Six point four. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. It's it's around there. Like and chance to convert a T sixteen to a seventeen. Yeah. Um, and uh, pretty much though, what that because you're like, okay, what the hell does that mean? Um, ultimately, when we were like, we've done a whole bunch of sampling. Say at like, you're running a red map. You've got like. 
pretty much, well, you're at tier 16s, you've got most of your Atlas filled in and like an average thing. You're doing kind of like, you know, mid tier role, alking a map with some basic investment here and here. And like you're averaging one to two scarabs and all that. It's kind of like, how often should you be getting and running a tier 17? Um, and we're kind of aiming for like a one in five at that point. So obviously when you're juicing, okay. juicing, you're getting more than that. But uh, because the drops have a, do have a diminishing return. So um, seven or 6.4% or whatever is actually, it's decent. I'm um, sure it might sound low, but like, you know, you can get a decently large amount of tier 16s in a map. Um, so you'll get, the first one has that chance to convert and then sequential ones have less and less chance. Yeah. And again, this is because initially when we were doing it, we were balancing around super juices and we're like, which means your average person who's just like Alkin going is like pretty much never going to get them because the differential between those two in terms of item drops is just enormous, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so we're balancing around more regular players here and doing diminishing returns instead. It's not a thing we, we don't often do diminishing returns, but in this case, I think it's warranted to give the average player a better experience. Yeah. Um, or someone who's just playing maps regularly. Um, so uh, what else is there around that? So yeah, as you get more void stones, you get more opportunities to do tier 17s. There's a few other little things about the drops. So for example, um, a specific map can only drop a specific tier 17. Oh. So running different maps to farm. Now, now this is good and bad. This means if you, I just, I just want to farm my Crimson Temple or my Cemetery, it means you're getting the same tier 17 always. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. This could be a good thing and a bad thing. Like it might mean you want the diversity and you want all the different tier 17 uh, tile sets or layouts. But I'd say this gives you um, that agency. You can now go, I just want this one or I just want that one. And if you want to do multiple like different maps with different atlas trees and stuff like that, you can do that and aim for different tier 17s. Um, now that's relevant ideally because you, you're choosing what boss you want to get, which you can choose the uh, unique they drop and obviously the tile set and thus the signature monsters and all that because some of those can be pretty brutal. Uh, but you're also choosing then at that point what uber fragment you're farming. Yeah. Um, because now it's not a one tier 17 to one fragment ratio. Each boss can drop all fragments, but it, um, they are biased towards a specific three. Okay. So if you want to get certain uber, uh, uber pinnacle bosses, you want to farm specific tier 17s to get higher efficiency. And if you want to just get all of them, then you can just map freely. But you have the control there. Um, it's like not completely deterministic and that's fine. Um, but yeah, you will generally, if you want to be like, I want to target Uber XARC, then there'll be a specific tier 17 or set of tier 17s that will be better at giving those um, than the others. So, but eventually you'll trickle all the other ones as well. So one thing I was uh, wondering about, because obviously right now access to Ubers is it's super accessible, right? You just click a button and then you're running the normal limitations. Um, how much yep. less accessible is Ubers going to be now uh, that they are completely split? Um, well, obviously a lot less. Um, there's not, well, you could argue like, you know, how common were Guardian maps before versus how common are tier 17s now? Um, you do need five of the fragments from the tier 17s. Mm -hmm. And if we're saying an average player gets one in, um, uh, one in five rate average maps, then to get five tier 17s, you need to have, be doing 25 maps, to, uh, 25 tier 16s. Um, but then the Guardian drops were like, um, what was it? 3% base for a Shaper Guardian and then another 3% from the tree, mm -hmm. which is like a 6% chance for one Guardian. Um, now that's not necessarily, that's like where those generally come from, from just spamming. And obviously you can invest into heaps of ways to, you know, duplicate your maps and all of that. And you can still technically do a lot of that. Um, but yeah, I'd say they're, I mean, almost certainly I'd say they're less accessible, but I wouldn't say by too much. Okay. And I'd say the tier 17s are quite challenging as a nice bridge in between that anyway. So it's like, okay. it should be, uh, like, I think it'll make, I, I like it in the way that it's going to make it that, yeah, you're doing them maybe a bit more occasionally. Um you can also still do the non-Uber Pinnacle, non-Uber Pinnacle bosses 
in the meanwhile, while you're still mapping, you're still getting all of those and they have exclusive drops. So hopefully the value of doing them is still something. Yeah. Um, that might come boss to boss, meta to meta to control that. Uh, but yeah, you would ideally be doing some level of like pinnacle or uber pinnacle bosses enough that you, you're going to feel satisfied. Um, that isn't necessarily like, yes, there are probably some people who are happy just like, you know, trading or doing some sort of, you know, ridiculous strat to get as many as possible and just spamming them all the time. Yeah. And that might now be harder, but also you can still trade for that and you can certainly you know, optimize the amount of them you're running. Um, but yeah, the different drops also means, and if they are more scarce, it only means that the drops from them are more valuable as well, which is yeah. obviously a good trade-off that happens. So um, yeah, I can't say with certainty one way or the other, but that's kind of generally how it works and our expectations and it's always changeable. So yeah. Um, I did want to inquire a little bit about the design philosophy difference there between, obviously, we already in the game right now have normal at Ziri and you run normal at Ziri and you get the Uber fragments versus now this is from a completely different source. I would love to hear you talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I've talked about this a little bit, but um, just to reiterate there, effectively, like, what is the fun? Okay, like, okay, the first time it's kind of fine. If you were to, like, I do Shaper X times and now I do Uber Shaper, maybe you fail. Perfect. But let's say you now conquer Uber Shaper and you want to do it more, you want to utilize it, you want to farm from it. And then I'm telling you the way to do that is to farm a bunch of this content that you have already proven completely capable of doing. Like it just becomes boring. Mm -hmm. You have to do multiple shapers to get to do Uber Shaper. And you could argue, well, it's just one. It's still the same problem. Yeah. I don't want you to have to go and do a bunch of like content that is clearly trivialized to you. Okay. Like the non-Uber version of Shaper in order to then be able to do the fight that's worthy of your difficulty. So that's where the tier 17s are the kind of bridge between that difficulty where like, and because they have randomness and mods, like a tier 17 might be easy and then the next one might be very, very hard. So like there are going to be points where they have certain modifiers and they actually might even be harder than the Uber pinnacle, but at least they're different. Whereas like Shaper versus Uber Shaper, like what's like, again, if you've conquered one, the other is just it's not it's not entertaining yeah. really at that point it's just kind of like that's fair. you know wasting time for no good reason i i was also curious about if you are able to give or want to give a indication of the difficulty like are obviously they have very different mods um so maybe maybe talk about without mods but like compared to like ubers elder guardians katarina like what's sort of like difficulty level like where are they sitting um they're meant to sit between you know between the current uh, pinnacle and uber pinnacle kind of ideally in the kind of halfway mark okay uh, maybe but that i would say that's like kind of base but the, honestly those modifiers are absolutely freaking hectic like you get yeah. some combinations and you're just like yeah this is this is brutal um so it's very 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 swingy and because you can't get them without modifiers um it's hard to even see them how they are without them like yeah there's some there's some crazy stuff there so yeah it's 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 certainly the easiest ones will be like it's so hard to get it's so it's so uh, to quantify difficulty is very yeah. very difficult um, uh anyway they're meant to be if they can, the, they, look they're meant to be the pen ultimate difficulty right they're meant to be the second to top tier but with the correct with the modifiers they easily become harder um in some ways and and often in ways that aren't like i would say the uber pinnacles hardness isn't like difficulty from mods isn't the same as difficulty from uh, mechanics. Yeah. Like difficulty from mechanics is more skill oriented. Uh, your capacity for your brain to effectively be multi-threaded, paying attention to several things at a time, all of that. Where like mods can easily become like, you know, I might have to overcome this with gear. I might have to overcome with this a build, or maybe I just have to have higher reaction time. Like, there's a big variety there, and it makes it very, very different to to be able to quantify. So, like, you could argue it makes it more difficult in a unfair way on some axes, and that is what makes it different. Um, but it certainly is, yeah. Like, ideally, without mods, things are extremely tactical, and with mods, things are taking in a little bit more like character build. And I can't. I would say personally, I obviously prefer tactical because then it's just straight up yeah. skill. Obviously, I want that. Probably most people want that. Um, but I also like that you can build a character that can conquer this. You can build characters that specialize in this um, and that are better as well. And you can ones that overcome certain mods and that you can't necessarily run every map, which you could see as a downside. But 
do you then go and say, well, I will either trade this away or I will make something that allows me to conquer this and I will overcome this challenge with my gear and with my character. Um, these are cool things that appeal to different play styles and different players. Like, um, as much as something being skill-based is fun for me, um, having the capacity for your build and gear to make it, like, the higher that gets, the less skill you need is also something that Path of Exile is just all about. So getting both best of both worlds, ideally. Um, but, yeah, I, you know, you always have people very, very divided on this topic as to, yeah. like, you know, where that is. And, yeah, anyway. Yeah. And were they affected by your Atlas at all? Uh, yeah, you can fully juice tier 17s for sure. Uh, I do believe the number of fragments is affected by quantity, so having the mods does mean you get more uber pinnacles, but you can't remove them. It's just a matter of you do want to juice as much as possible. Obviously not player quantity, it's just the standard like map mod difficulty and uh, doing all that, but you can juice 17s. Tier 17s are twice the size of a regular map. Um, wow. They have wow. so twice as many monsters, um, generally. Uh, they also have uh, more valuable signature. Um, the packs are all generally higher, like effectiveness and value, and so they will drop more items. Uh, and uh, wow, I think the mods are all a bit more rewarding as well. I could be wrong about that, but I think that is the case in terms of just quant rarity pack size. Um, but you know, there's the downside of the div cards. Uh, they don't drop because uh, they're new, and all the div cards drop in all the existing content. You, it's not like you're farming them for your divination cards and stuff like that. Um, so you could argue they're less economically, you know, worthwhile in that regard, but um, they are better in almost every other regard. But you could use the scarabs, right? Could, could you use scarabs on tier 17s? Uh, yeah, that should work, yes. So you could do the favored maps? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah that, that, one, that one should work, but I'm, I'm assuming in a world where not everyone has access to that infinitely. That's fair. But, yeah, That's sure. fair. I was just clarifying. Awesome. That's so cool. So on hardcore, I'm running the sulfite nodes that give me damage and max rest in every tier 17. Yeah, that is. That is, um, I mean, that is probably kind of what everyone's talking about. I would say, like, there's interesting things with that where, like, you look at that and you're kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, it's not ideal because then it's that exact thing I'm talking about earlier where it's like you don't want people to feel like they have to do a thing. And, like, you don't have to, but, like, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, so, yeah, you, you get a bit of that going on and it's like, but on the other hand, it's like. Well, it does have a big release. opportunity cost. It it is for sure, but it's also like you know you could you could see, <laughs> I um, you get a lot obviously like a lot of the people in the office play the game and are like all talking like I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and like you can consider that to be like oh man they've like, already the mess is figured out you know um which isn't necessarily true there's gonna be heaps of development but it's so easy to just hear that and be like ah oh, we want to change that mm -hmm. and I'm certainly of the like obviously not like you don't release the patch notes, let everyone figure out what they're <laughs> going to do, and then just maliciously, like, ah, oh, see ya. Like, I am not about that. Like, if we, I know this is probably a little bit, like, there's probably evidence of this in the past not being the case, but certainly, like, if we post the patch notes and then we f change something afterwards, it is with damn good reason before the release. Um, but, yeah, what people do also need to understand there is, of course, the patch notes get posted. We're not finished development. Like, we, we are going till Friday. Um, that is how we do things. So things do change, but um, don't worry, your sulfite node is safe for now. Awesome. Um, for now. <laughs> that's oh, a 325 no. problem, if it is even a problem <laughs> at all. Cool. Um, how, like, how different... Actually, can we spectre Brutus? Uh, you should be able to spectre all of the tier 17... Well, pretty much all the tier 17 monsters. So there's, like... Uh, what's it called? I, there's a freaking. Uh, what's the. Uh, what's the. Incarcerator? Wait. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know if Brutus is actually very good, but um, might be funny. You, you uh, froze we'll as you were so saying there, so we're not 100% sure what you said. Oh. Uh, I, yeah, I can't remember. Where it, well, depends where it cut, but either way, uh, yes, you can speak to pretty much every tier 17 monster. Okay. You can speak to Brutus. Uh, there's like a purifier in there. You can speak to the purifier. Um, uh, his oh, cool. cast of form kind of thing, and he's got some skills there. There's others as well. We, we, there should be some fun in there for sure. And again, these are higher effectiveness monsters. Like technically, these are these specters are the new top in terms of at least life. Like they have the highest um, amount of life compared to every other monster. So if you're looking for just straight dead, dead <laughs> that's probably a uh, 
are oh no probably your optimal one right now oh no uh, not by much not by much not by much it's it's not much more but it doesn't yeah. need much Sorry. oh i know but it's not the intention it's just that they're the <laughs> hardest monsters in the game and so that's what happens yeah i feel that uh i w- will bring that up more later but um yep. 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 i understand the issue there <laughs> yeah cool um yeah the only thing i was gonna ask there is like um obviously some of the some of the bosses one, one of them is like katarina and like the similar to the synthesis or heist robot and stuff like how how like different are these are they basically completely whole new fights um there's a lot of familiar mechanics um so katarina i'll i'll, I'll talk briefly about that because we kind of showed it but i won't give away too many mechanics but in the teaser, there were those three entities kneeling in front of Katarina. Those are the three abyss liches. Um, ah. And so she's in a room and there's those and she releases those over the fight and each one you kill makes the fight harder going forward and they come out in a random order. And so that one's pretty drastically changed, but like uh, I won't go into any more detail than that because I want people to actually yeah. figure that stuff out and like share. I, I like I love it when people are like figuring out how to defeat bosses and what's the best strategies and all that cool. I, I don't want to take that away from people um, um well yeah that's that's perfect next thing is something you specifically wanted to talk about which i really liked you're like i want to talk about this uh the the bingo uh yeah i should bring that up as well because i don't remember half of them yeah. let me just find it i have it open on stream too if that helps uh, i am just worried uh well it's all good i'll just bring it up so it's bigger yeah there's, there's eyes, a, a lot of things to go through here up. holy there is a lot so um i brought this up at some point and i um <laughs> i i did a first pass based on instinct and i actually opened brought it in ms paint and i'm like i'm gonna just like red scribble through some of these and um and uh you know the ones i definitely am not doing and then and then I did a second pass, and then I was like, you know, what can we actually do? And there's, it's so easy to dismiss things that are like from a rich some philosophy from back when, when reality you can just talk about it and be like, okay, but there's something, there is something we can do to solve the problem. So it's that whole give what they need, not what the necessarily. But I will tell you, by the way, this is the best form of feedback that I could possibly receive. Ten thousand word essays stop doing that i don't read them like what are you doing like i'm not giving up my entire evening to read this thing that has a whole bunch of passive aggressive or not even passive aggressive just aggressiveness in it yeah just give me your this is obviously what the community team is great for um because they do condense it down but i'll just point out if you want to actually like you know get me to look at a number of features this is perfect like hold this is there are 25 24 problems on here that are just like to the point give me a solution or give me something, and I'm just like, sweet. Let's let's figure it out. Let's discuss it. Let's make sure you know we we either have good reason for not doing it or good reason for, uh, or actually you know, we should reconsider these things. So T- ten thousand people in um, chat are now writing bingo sheets. I hope you're aware of this. <laughs> perfect. Like yeah, actually perfect. Good. It's just do understand. I will tactically p- um, pick the one so that you can't actually complete the bingo. Um, <laughs> so no, I I won't do that obviously, but. Um, so, okay, um, we did go through these. I'll go through, uh, I mean, obviously, bottom right one's done. Sweet, perfect. Um, and done before you posted it, so I beat you to it, except there was probably one of these in the past, so technically I didn't. Um, teleport shortcut. I, I was like, I, for a while, I was like, what the heck does that mean? But I'm assuming it means the portal scroll bind. Yeah, because that's portal what scroll I did. bind. Yeah, um, yeah sure. Uh, so things on here like, um, bigger currency stack sizes did that too. Oh, so oh, okay, so we almost got the bingo on the right hand side. Um, we're missing two. Um, so combat dummy, I'll just talk about that real quick. So, um, I don't. We've actually back and forth on this a bunch, but I don't like that. Uh, I like that people can be very creative with a build, and I know we're in the world of pob, but I like that someone can like play a build by feel and again isn't doing this whole like because i can now quantify exactly what this build is doing and if it is below this value now it is clearly not worth playing like i don't want to squash creativity and i feel like the moment you have dps meters and all of that stuff it does do that 
and it has been evident in Path of Exile over time. And I get it. There is like, well, POB, but then I would argue, why is POB not sufficient enough um, at that point? Because if the if you're the kind of person that cares about that, you're just going to use that, or you're going to follow someone's guide anyway. In which case, they're going to tell you. Um, so that one, I've and look, don't get me wrong. I've been on the fence. I, I almost yeah. added that um, at some point. I've gone back and forth. Um, we were going to do it like we had mega amounts of arguments about it, but I do believe it makes people less likely to kind of just try things that are fun as opposed to things that are optimized. And you could argue optimizing is fun, but that's not true for everyone. Um, well, so I do have a hmm? counterpoint there. Like the main reason I would want it and, and like, ideally you just don't want this. Right. But, um, there are a lot of bugs, so sometimes the the greatest thing with the target dummy is you can check if an interaction actually works. Like I remember, um, for example, I was playing minion instability summon raging spirits, and I put on like the they do more damage with low life, and I was like, this definitely doesn't work. Does it work? And people were like, no, it works. And then I messaged uh, uh, Bex at the time, and I was like, I, am I going crazy? Does this not work? And and it was bugged at the time. Which stuff like that is a lot more noticeable with an actual target dummy. So that is definitely a uh, good thing. Um, I would say that uh, having bugs is not a good excuse for having a, that is the wrong but that's motivation. That's unavoidable. Like that just us sucking, right? Like <laughs> we should just not have that be the case. Um, and and yeah. obviously a lot of the reason why people want it is because the stuff isn't as observable in terms of like figuring out exactly what your DPS is, like just on, like the character stat sheet isn't giving enough information, especially when it comes to something like minions and all of that. And that is all stuff we need to just make better. I know PoE2 is taking mega strides right now yeah. to get that stuff accurate. Like the numbers you see is what you get. Um, and we probably, once that is in a good place, I could see a world where we, uh, you know, do an update on PoE1 for that to make sure it's done okay. the same. Um... Uh, but anyway, uh, it's easy to talk about a single point forever, so we yeah. can either move on or move not. On. I mean, you, you get my stance on it. I, I agree. A lot of people aren't going to agree with me, and that's completely mm -hmm. fine. You don't have to. Um, and maybe one day I will be swayed. Uh, so going up the line, the aura is no longer reset on death. Uh, we can. We're definitely doing it in POE 2, so I don't see a reason why we can't do that in POE 1. Okay. Um, I would say that's on the like probable list going forward. Um, uh, fragment stash in map device. Um, uh, I don't know if the fr I don't want the fragment stash there because then we're getting even into more. You have to buy it, but kind of what you want is as a, a an additional kind of inventory accessible there, which I do see being quite a strong. Uh, this probably after this league I could see uh, or during this league I could see that being something that we Ooh. start to really think about and develop because. Uh, like a yeah, little rucksack. I can see that being a problem. Uh, yeah, I mean, we can have like a little map device rucksack, not a character yeah. one. But. <laughs> um, uh, the sorting. Well, that's been a sorting private stash tabs and inventory. Uh, that's certainly been a hot topic internally of late, and we've been uh, back and forthing on that. I'd say you got flip of a coin as to whether or not that's going to make it in soon. So, okay. Um, we'll see. Uh, I'm not personally against that one. Uh, I, I am a little bit with inventory. I don't want that feature to bloat out into like item filter territory where you've got millions of options and customizing of how it works. So like I would be okay with like a basic, this is how it, like it just, here's the sorting algorithm. You're given what you're given and like, you know, it sorts it in some way, but I wouldn't want it to be, you can bring up some menu and get all into that. I don't like that thing. Yeah. I think that's again, part of this adding complexity where it isn't really needed. Um, okay. And I know a lot of people are going to ask for that. So even if that feature does happen, we're not going to get into that. So just don't expect it. Um, cool. Let's see. Larger pickup radius. Well, I've given my opinion on that. I am kind of keen. Um, uh, it's just a matter of getting it right before we do it. So I would say you can expect, I would even not be surprised if 325 can get something there. Oh. Um, color-coded affixes. Are you talking on items or are you talking under uh, monster affixes? So I've only know. brought this up as a point about maps, but I mean, I could see people wanting them on items too, like plus one gems and stuff like that. Both, I guess. Um, recently, someone did ask me about it and I was kind of like, look, try it out, but I don't want it to like look 
it, it can certainly look real bad and look cheap. And you could argue, well, I don't care how it looks. I just care how it, if I get the information. I agree that is like ultimately the importance, but at the other hand, I'd like to try and find a way that doesn't compromise it to make it just look like a, a kind of, uh, what do we call it? Like a, a clown something, you know, yeah. <laughs> your classic, just like, well, here's a rainbow of stuff on the item. And you're like, oh, what the, um, it can just make items feel real and elegant. And it, it's, that's yeah. the only real hesitancy from me, but what I understand why people want it. Um, possibly. Well, this is, it is an option. Uh, it might result in the same thing of, again, now you look at an item. That I worry, Look, you'd look at an item and the item now looks more complex than it really is. Right. And our items aren't exactly simple. So I worry that's, but then, then you're like, well, put it behind an option. But then you're like, well, the people who need to know it more are probably the people who would have that off by default. The people yeah. it's most useful for. And then you get into a bit of like, is this actually, you know, solving the problem and then how much of a problem is it really but you know i consider that low-hanging fruit compared to a lot of these to be honest that's right um itemized ashling slam well we've done that but we also took one away um which i know has been a point yeah of, you know, um, i i did want to talk about that too and you did mention it during the ziggy podcast or like the the q a at the end but obviously there's I, I've seen so much talk about it and I think I'll get lynched for not asking, but so many people were wondering if we could have both. Um, I would, well, yeah, my personal thing is still, I would like to remove crafting bloat where possible, where it is not like kind of super mainstream, um, as in like it's coming from a league or beyond belongs to a league. Um, but I also don't want to just infinitely uh, add crafting things to the game and never be able to take stuff away because yeah. it is, I'd say one of the most fearful things about POE and, and players coming into the game is the complexity. And I think that ultimately, like, yes, you could argue the passive tree and whatnot, but I think the item crafting is probably one of the more daunting things um, because it is just there are so many different things and you don't know what to really do. And it can be very, very scary. I mean, I know this is like a low, you could argue, oh, it's just one item, you know, we're not talking about a system here. Um, but on the other hand, like any space or design space I can clear to do something else and do it differently and better. I will, I do want to take those opportunities and design space is valuable. Like it is very, very important for us to clear design space. And like an interesting one, like a, Thinking of just sextants, removing sextants now frees up more design space for us to use things on the Atlas itself. And again, that adds complexity. Yeah. Um, of course it does. Um, but, but we still have to add content. And a game at this point, like, you, I mean, you can't just stop adding content. And so, yeah, taking these opportunities to remove things so that we can reevaluate that design space and add something new is a huge victory for us, even though I can see that from a player's perspective, it's like you're taking away because the delayed reaction of the when the thing then gets added in its place doesn't happen at the exact same time. Hmm. Um, so it happens later. So I, yeah, I mean, my main point is I want people to understand the value of creating a, a gap and creating a gap, letting people then adapt to the, the gap not being there to then add something back that's even better is very valuable when it comes to like game design and game development uh unless you just want to actually bloat the features of your game to the point of absolute ridiculousness which you could argue poe is getting there and so like we're certainly in an era where adding stuff uh is can be quite dangerous because when you go look at like people's new you want new players you can't just not bring in new players that's the death of a game right you you obviously want your existing ones but you also need new people because eventually people are going to taper off. And so when the number one problem with Path of Exile is complexity, 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 when it comes to new players starting the game, um, it is, should be that it is very important to us, the players, to everyone, that we are taking opportunities to, de, uh, to you know, remove complexity from the game um, so we can add stuff in its place instead of just infinitely increasing the amount of content. Right. I know that's like, hard to connect those two dots between what the heck it's just a veiled orb to, um, you know, to like that. But again, the small, the small wins matter as well. So I can't convince you to trade you an engineering orb for a veiled chaos orb back. Ah, uh, well, that... <laughs> 
we already have a plan for engineers all. Okay. So <laughs> um, we we were actually going to do it in this patch, but it kind of got cut. Uh, That's fair because we ran out of time. But uh, yeah, awesome. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I know we've been going for ages, and I'll just point out that uh, it might just be at the end of this bingo. We can probably just conclude there, um, just because otherwise we're going to go forever. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's all right on your end. But yeah, I was going to say, I wasn't month. planning on going over two hours. I don't know how you feel about a quick break because I wasn't um, planning to go this long. Uh, we could, or uh, it depends if you want to hold out for the rest of the bingo and then we can just call it there. Um, the, I just probably. An the amount of work piling up for me and <laughs> okay right um, up to you really if you want to break i'm easy easy to do it as well it just depends how much more longer you're willing to go because there's a lot of things we wanted to talk about um well we're probably just not going to get through it all i'd say so i reckon we let's just finish the bingo and move on just because otherwise okay. there's going to be let's a bunch of changes the game let's do that we get, don't do break so, then um, we know break we just keep going yep let's do it tank it yep um okay well, larger inventory space, you've heard my debates on that one, yeah. especially with the you know, rucksack, Jonathan and Chris and stuff and our internal battles. Um, I just, I like inventory pressure. Uh, you could argue, <laughs> most right. people are not going to argue this, but you could argue there's too many items dropping and that's the main problem. And more so there's too many items that you feel like you need to pick up. Like there's that huge eternal, like, why are we not? reducing the amount of items and making them higher quality. And I still want to achieve that by the way. Oh, okay. Um, like I definitely want to do it. It is just another one of those things we were talking, I was talking about earlier, where if you remove all the sick, uh, scarabs or you mess up all the scarabs, the game's dead, right? Cause the end game's now dead, right? If you mess that up badly, um, if you remove, if you mess up the item system, it's, it's also just GG, right? Like, it is not the kind of thing you can get wrong. Yeah. So I definitely uh, still want to do the whole, like, you shouldn't need to, by day two, be, and I know I'm talking about in-game people, but I, you shouldn't, by day two, have to be filtering out 99% of item drops and yeah. all of that. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like, I want it to be that a filter is, obviously, you still always will filter items. I want it to be that a filter's purpose is to format items but not necessarily, and I'm not saying I'm going to change it. We're not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to make it that you can't hide items and all that. That's not the thing. But I, I, I don't want it to be that um, you're just filtering so, so, so much. But I love the formatting. I like being able to change to make certain things look more important than others and change the sizes and all of that. That's absolutely great. Um, but I don't think you should have to need to do this. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of just want to have less items that are more impactful and thus reduce the kind of need for the whole inventory space to always feel larger. But on the other hand, I do believe that is an interesting pressure to have, such that you can't just take everything you want always. I do think that you need that. I know uh, it's similar to like sockets, where people perceive yeah. socket pressure as bad, and socket pressure is more that it's imbalanced between certain builds, but socket pressure is good. Like you shouldn't just be able to have every single skill in the entire game equipped all at once. Um, yeah. Not that that's necessarily beneficial. Pressures and limits are good. Um, it means you have to make different decisions and you have constraints and you have to actually think about it. And that these are good things that make the game a game you play as opposed to just a thing that's like background processing. Like a lot of people after driving for so long end up don't even remember. You don't remember the drive because it just becomes this kind of, I don't know if this is a good comparison by the way, but it's just something that came to mind. You don't remember, I don't remember what the hell happened when I drove in this morning. Because nothing eventful happened, right? And you want right. these events to be happening that are actually triggering emotional responses and are causing you to make decisions, not subconsciously, but actually consciously. Otherwise, again, you're not playing a game. You're just like going through some background processing on some things. I want, yeah. you should engage, you should play, you should do actions and do things that are meaningful and not just like, you know, I don't, I, I know there's the argument of like, I don't, people have the whole, uh, you know, the TV on the other screen or the, some show on the other screen while they're playing. And like, there are people who love that and want that. And I think that is something you earn with good character builds and power. But it can't just be like that all the time. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't ever just be able to not, like, you shouldn't just be able to just completely streamline the game to the point where you don't even need to look at the screen anymore, really. Um, 
and like I, I understand with like item filters you can kind of just play with like a peripheral vision on a mini map and using mini map icons to play and then your uh, item filter will tell you when a big item drops due to the sound and um, I'm generally against things that mean that you're not actually looking at the game world, looking at your character, deciding what's going on around you. And do, I do know, I know that is very, very hard to achieve with the level of ruckus that goes on towards the high end game. But at yeah. least you've earned that. You've earned that. You've chosen to do that. And you're putting more effort into running maps and configuring maps and itemization and gear before you're doing that. And uh, it's easy to ask for that to be the default all the time. And I think that would actually just destroy the game. I don't yeah. think there would be, uh, like, that is not, I don't consider that to be fun if that is the norm always. Earning it, perfectly good. So, anyway, a uh, bit of a rant there and no, a bit good. tangential, but. So, they're, they're pretty enjoyable to listen to. I like it. Um, and I, I agree, like, choices are important. Um, what's the next one? Uh, death recap. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jonathan's talked about this in PoE 2 a little bit, and we definitely want to do it. Um, I've been trying to figure out how to do it lately, and I think the easiest we can do, and I'm curious if this is enough, because I know everyone's going to want like exactly what skill and exactly this and this, what most people actually might want to frame-by-frame replay with logging and all that. And like, There is an easier solution, which is that we probably can do something like either time or the last time you were on full life, and by that I mean... Uh, unres- uh, ignoring reservation, life, mana, ed- like energy shield, like you're full on resources. Um, what damage you took from what monster, and at the point of death, what debuffs you had on you. But I can't, we can't have like, here's how much the debuff was doing, and we can't be like, the skill did this much damage and all that. Like giving names oh, okay. and identities to the skills is hard, but giving just saying what monster contributed what damage is something that's a lot more easier. Uh, that's pretty a lot huge. easier. That's pretty huge. Um, and then I guess on the death screen, you'd have something you can pop open. It would have effectively a grid uh, by monsters and by like damage types, probably. And then a list of like you were affected by this debuffs when you died. Um, I would say that is like within reason. Um, but then, yeah, you, you obviously get the whole, like, uh, even then that has complexities because we have the concept of a daemon, which is effectively an environment hazard or like a um, a lot of the arch nemesis mods and well, now just rare monster mods, but, you know, the whole lightning storm and all that. That's technically not the rare monster doing the damage. That's just like some invisible other monster. So we're going to have to go through and name all of those correctly so that they appear as like lightning storm modifier and stuff like that we're going to have to do. And it will get some weird inconsistencies. But I think you'll get kind of 90 to 95% of what you want. And that might just be enough. Um, It's just there will be sometimes times where you're just like, I'm dead and I don't know why. And we can't provide the best answer. Uh, Like if it was from a dot, you can be like, I was affected by this dot. And I took some damage, but I'd, I, I, you'd have to interpret, okay, the dot killed me that did most of the damage and stuff like that. And there are, there are ways, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm awesome. all for it. It's just been complex. And I don't think that getting it perfect is enough of an excuse to not get it 90% of the way there right now. Right. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people at this point will take anything. We're very excited for that. Um, the next one is larger inventory space. Uh, now we're going down. I was, I was going doing some weird pathing. Okay. Um, persist master mission selection. Uh, yeah. Well, not a problem anymore. Yeah, it's gone. gone. Um, mini map mechanic icons. Uh, I have two states of minds about this one, but mostly, I mean, like I added, we got it added for strong boxes. Someone suggested it in house. Yeah, I was like, yeah, of course, let's add it. Um, but again, it goes back to that. Like, I don't want the game to be. I look at a mini map and I play off the mini map. Obviously, that's very important right now. Uh, but I would rather. Um, so POE2 does a thing that I think is very, very good, which is that minimap icons do not appear until they are within your um, f- uh, Fog of War radius. And so you, right now, there's this thing where area transitions have like a radius of 250 units, which is just freaking t- megalithic, right? 25 meters or yeah. whatever. And they just appear and you're like, oh, now I know where I'm navigating. Whereas in POE2, you have your Fog of War, which is effectively your screen, and you actually have to see the object before it appears on the minimap. And I think this is very, very, very good. I think that the way it has changed how you play is hugely win. So I'm, I'm all for having more stuff on the mini map. 
I don't actually know how much more stuff needs to be there because I will explain. I don't like monsters on the mini map okay. because I don't want you to just position the monster on the edge of your screen and then just shoot off screen and hit it. And so mm. you knowing it's exact, you can right. kind of do that already. I understand, but I don't. Um, in some contexts, it's fine, but in most cases, I am actually kind of against having it that um, monsters are on the mini map. Like I just don't think that it again i want you to look at your screen and i see the monster and know it's there and if the mo if the concern is the monster's off screening you well that's just that's that's us sucking so let's just not make that a case and if there are bosses that are off screening you all the time then um we should fix it now one thing that will solve this which is another one on here it's the next one well, not really it's skipping uh is the boss health bar i want to do static life bars very right. very badly I think it is the one of the best features in PoE 2. It's very nice. Um, I want to do it. And here's the thing. You will know when a boss is nearby because the boss, the static life bar in theory, should appear. Yeah. And I want that to be a very good signaling and do right. not have to use the minimap for it. Now, to now, be fair, that was one of my favorite features of Metamorph was actually seeing the monster packs. Like, that was really enjoyable. Well, I can see why it is considered useful, but I... I, I mean, I share this. I see people arguing about this a little bit, but again, it's that whole. I want you to look at the monsters. I want you to look well, at the things, and you could argue you you can't, but I want you to actually like. It, it wasn't anything about off screen or anything for me. For me, it was like the packs that burrow and stuff. Like I always found that really annoying, like the like the sand skitters and and stuff like that. Like that was so nice in Metamorph. Well, okay, and in, in the context of Metamorph, because you are really promoting, you want to collect all the organs. That's a very different story. But like a random. I don't even know what, but like, let's say your random packs that are replaced by map bosses. Like, I don't think those need to have mini map icons, right? Like, why would they? You mm -hmm. just come across it or you don't. Um, it's not needed to complete an objective, so to speak. Right. Um, whereas, like, on Metamorph, it's kind of like if you miss one of those, you could spend the next 10 minutes searching for monsters and be like, my God, this is so frustrating. Um, because you don't want to then do your Metamorph encounter yeah. until you've found them all. So, I, see that. I would say they're, they're different contexts for sure, but. Um, there might be some contexts that deserve it that I am not thinking about. Like, I don't want to just be like, no, never in any. It is contextual, and they possibly are. But again, uh, at yeah. least for bosses and uh, stuff appearing, I want that to be static life bar driven. I'm going to start doing that. But that's, again, a thing where the fear has been that um, unless we do all of them, it's not worth doing any of them. Oh, okay. But I think I just need to get away from that and start doing it in categories. So, for example, we could do anything that's in a fixed arena is easier, but like, the trouble I have, okay, you go city square map, you got twinned map bosses, you've got um, Maven where she spawns two extra bosses. I mean, how am I displaying eight life bars? Right. And so the question is, is it the three closest? And then at what point is it useful? Yeah, like, the same for the fear. You know, the UI is going to gonna turn into a disaster. Um, and uh, we might have to figure that out anyway because like, I don't want to have it that you can't have a decent amount of bosses in PoE 2. But, you know, you could argue it's the three closest or the X closest or the three that have, you've last damaged, but then with AoE, you're going to get flickering like crazy or like just swapping between them and it won't really be relevant. It could be the three that have damaged you or it could be that when one damages you, it, it overrides one that hasn't damaged you. But I think the simplest is I just try the three closest or the X closest however many closest and then we see where that goes because it's still better than nothing i would say especially um, for like just even if all we got it for was like the pinnacle yeah. bosses like the ubers and, and those that would make a big difference already like cyrus etc yeah. for sure it's just that once we have the static boss bars it allows us to do a lot more stuff with uh, like the debuff icons underneath them and all of that stuff and that is so useful information yeah not all debuffs but you know the important ones that matter which you can see poe2 getting a lot of yeah and um i think that is and so that's where it's like i kind of want them everywhere but yeah i was going to start with like ubers pinnacles and then work down to like act bosses and then you know go from there and start getting the more fundamental ones but it's actually kind of easy to do the campaign because you don't have so many bosses all at once. Yeah. Um, it's when you then should a breach boss have it? Should a legion general have it? Yeah. Should a like I don't I don't really know these answers. And then it's like, oh, all of a sudden you can it should it's not just unique. So like should a rogue exile have it? Well probably not, right? Definitely well, less a priority on those. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's just we should start doing the ones. Um I'm kind of sl I'm slating that at least a part way doing it for it for three twenty five. So Yeah. Um yeah, that'll be nice. And then you'll know when a boss is nearby and within radius and all that. Um, 
which will help and then alleviate the need for minimap icons on them as well because there'll be something else on your screen telling you they're there. And awesome. of course, the music will hopefully change in most cases at the same point. Yeah. Um, okay, what's next? Well, more tab affinities. Uh, kind of, I think I'm just at a no with that one. So I don't, the hard rule is here where we do not want everything to have an affinity. Mm -hmm. uh, and the only things left really are equipment, kind of jewels. Uh, we've kind of run out of um, uh, like room to add more there. We, we do not want it to that every single thing is just automated. Um, that's the same thing on the... Uh, I don't know if this is in here, but it, it's in the same kind of category as oh yeah, there. one-click transfer inventory to stash. Yeah. Um, you've, there have been many, many an arguments of item weight, and it is a very nebulous concept and whether or not it matters and all that. But there are certain lines that we certainly do not want to cross even at this point where I am okay. kind of okay with the sta uh, sorting your stash um, because I don't think that actually demeans weight in a way that is substantial. And everyone is subjective. Everyone has their opinion on how much an item should weigh and what that is. And a lot of people think that they should be weightless. And But again, we want it to be that you are engaging with these things. You're looking at these things. You are making conscious decisions about these things. And I understood you putting them into a... Um, Putting the control clicking them into a, a, a quad tab, you still later have to sort them out. So you can delay when you're dealing with the weight currently, but at least mm. the weight isn't necessarily removed. Um, but mass manipulation of items all at once uh, on non fungible, so non stackables, non currency, yeah. et cetera, uh, is just a line that we're not currently willing to, willing to cross because we make it, we feel like it makes it too much of a spreadsheet ultimately at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, you don't want it to be an item. Uh, and then, yeah. The, but we're pretty much at the point where the only affinities uh, that aren't there are our equipment. I'm pretty sure, right? Like maybe missing. There may be some very uh, select tattoos, things, incubators. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, incubator. Oh, yeah, because there's a thing there for asking for an incubator stash tab. Uh, I would rather, by the way, just have it that there are more uh, less incubators that are more powerful because like there is a a lot of bad like, ones. There is a lot right now that drop. It kind of gets a little bit out of control. Yeah. Um. So ideally lessening the need for so many of them uh, <laughs> would be a better thing there and making them better. Awesome. Um, but anyway, that's my perspective on that one. Mm -hmm. um, what's the persist rare mob? Well, I'm assuming the persist rare mob is you effectively want some sort of static life bar for rare monsters. Yeah. I mean, we're already talking about having issues with space for that. Um, yeah. Like you can get rares and bosses in the same space. It comes down to the same issue, honestly. And then, like, you can get 10 rares at once. And I, 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 is it the last one you damage? But when you're AoEing and chaining and shit's going everywhere, like, That's hard. you're not really controlling which one. So it's the same real problem. Uh, reroll Uber Fragments. Well, I guess we solved the one yep. that was contextual for this. And we have introduced a new need for someone to add this to the next bingo through the Uber Pinnacle ones. <laughs> um, because of the way we chose to do the target farming instead of having the reroll, yeah, so that you true. can buy us towards farming certain ones instead of needing to reroll. Uh, it might be that something like that is needed later, but again, I don't want it to be that in order to do all the boss content, you have to engage with Harvest. I think that if we wanted to do that, I'll do it through some core system yep. uh, or a recipe as opposed to that. Uh, we talked about the one above and the one above. Yeah. So passive tree planner. Um, yeah, because it looked uh, like we were going to get that at one point. Yeah, okay. What I want to be able to do is the basic functionality of import someone's tree, if you choose, or just forward plan your own, and that's it. I don't want to try and do what POB is doing, because that is just going to do it better, and it's also going to just bake that screen, add a feature that is the most beyond complicated thing you've ever, ever seen ever. But you should certainly be able to just be like, I'm going to import someone's tree and it's going to like show the layout of that and like the you know some point allegation and then you can also just plan the next x points on yeah. yours and like that's it really i think doing that is a good step in the right direction and then that's probably as far as we need to go with that one yeah um so that goes past and so it, yeah, yeah. Well, that's certainly currently on the planned list and it might be 325 it really again we're going to have to pick our um, pick our battles for this one so it's yeah. on my list of like i'm going to pick the here's all the things we're going to pick from it might be there it might not be there awesome uh colored stash tabs and icons as in 
you want to not, I guess that's like a not wanting to pay for the colored stash tabs. So you oh, want them right. on the default ones. I'm assuming. Uh, <laughs> I don't really know. Um, icons is an interesting yeah, idea, know. of course, because you want to be like, this is where my blah goes and my blah goes. Um, there's probably a room to do more of that. Obviously, the um, the premium ones come with oh, it, wait, but you want to, I guess, no, 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 no. There. They want colored folders and icons on the folders. Oh, no. well, uh, I'll look into that. I'll see. I don't actually, I'm not entirely familiar with what state that's in, to be honest. Yeah, because right uh, now it's just brown. Yeah. I'll just look into, oh, yeah, I'll look into that. Well, that's not appealing. I would, yeah, that's. Uh, awesome. <laughs> That's the that's the least fun default color to have for those because the, you wanna you wanna get that like vibrant. The stash is valuable. Yeah, <laughs> this exactly. folder is valuable. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, the, okay. Incubator stash tab. We kind of talked about like it's a problem with too many incubators right now. I'd say like it just shouldn't be necessary for you to need that. And, and like I would hate to have to sell that. Like you shouldn't have to pay for that. Um, Yes, it's not essential for a league, so by all rules, if we were to have one, you'd have to pay for it, and so it should just be we solve that problem the proper way. Okay. Uh, we will do the one-click to pop harvest node. Uh, there's just some small gameplay things I need to work around, but we may as well do that. That one's a pretty Ooh. pretty trivial at the end of the day. I mean, you're just saving that extra slightly delayed click. Um, but nice. That, so halving the clicks matters, so... That does. Uh, v decrupts essence. Well, V decrupt essence. Uh, I'm not okay with the V, but I am okay with the button. Um, I don't like how many things conflict with V, and it gets a little bit scary when yeah. you've got too many of them, and it's unclear now what V will do in some sort of situations. And I don't just like adding key binds for hyper specific content. Yeah. But I do want the button. Um, so yeah, we're going to put like a little remnant of corruption symbol next to the essences, and if you have one in your inventory, it appears, and you can just click it. Um, so at least saves the open inventory. I am, um, I am trying to get away from, I know technically you can clear around an essence, take a moment, open your inventory, do it, which means it's technically not the same problem, but I'm trying to get away from as many, uh, I have to open my inventory during combats as possible. Awesome. Um, then again, strong boxes are fundamentally kind of, that is what they kind of entail. Uh, and then yeah. I don't. I think that's you could a bit argue, different, though. We don't see that many people complaining yeah. about strong boxes either. Yeah, and a lot of the option, a lot of the main thing there is because you can kind of get them to just be rare by default and stuff like that, and so you don't yeah. have to feel like you alk them. But also, alking them is not even necessarily yielding you an extra alk in terms of rewards. It is worth noting that there are um, scarab modifiers on strong boxes now, so like you'll get scarabs through that means as opposed to strictly on the operatives box. Yeah, I think we actually removed the operatives box and moved all the mods to everything else. Um. But yeah, I'm not. I don't feel too. I don't feel like that one's necessary personally either. But the essence thing is certainly more annoying for sure. The remnant. So yeah. Anyway, I think that's the whole set of those. So yeah, there's yeah. a there's a good handful of them that should be looking like a 325 feature, um, maybe even more. And these are things again. I just want to remind like that we wouldn't have budged on this a year ago, even six months ago necessarily. And you know we are certainly. Uh, taking a slightly different stance and especially peer we two is really is the thing causing us to to do all of that um to really re reevaluate our um our core beliefs and make sure that we're not just holding on to or becoming the dinosaurs as we like to yeah. say um well i have a few quick fire things i can ask you about as well that people are very curious sure. about um war Christ, can we use two of them like automating uh no i believe all the descriptions have been updated to be more clear as well but um no because they share it's the same as call to arms so they all share a cooldown if you put you can only put one with call to arms um if it and then mm -hmm. it goes off and i think it's the first probably the first one in the sockets is my guess but um putting two is pointless right okay um Melee and, like, for example, feeling forced to use, like, the ancestral totems, uh, also problems with socket pressure. Um, agreed. Uh, very hard to solve. Uh, I've, I've been trying to think about this for a long time. I'm going to raise, the, uh, it's on my 325, it's a tier one feature on my 325 oh, okay. list of things I want to get sorted. Um, that doesn't mean it's happening, but, like, it certainly means I'm taking it seriously. Um, and I don't just mean the totems. Like you could argue, nerf the totems, buff everything else. Um, there are more problems than that, and it's a very hard one to get right. Everyone has so many different opinions of what's wrong with it. Um, and like, 
it's it's scary. There is some stuff we can do, and we should take small strides instead of the right ones. But I just need to make sure that uh, instead of the the big strides, uh, just because they're probably right. But like, we built Peary two <laughs> to fix melee. You know what I mean? Like, it is so hard to actually. It depends what you mean though, because if you want it to feel like moment to moment visceral melee combat, mm -hmm. you can't have that in a game that is this fast. So it's not sure. possible. Because it's too fast. You, you your strikes can't matter. Your your like the feel of your hits aren't going to matter. Um, well, it's just not. Grand Slam Impaler was honestly did feel really good, even in a fast game. To be fair, right? But uh, okay, so that's and that's where you come down to like yeah, yeah, we add builds that promote playing slower. Yeah, but again, that's it depends. It depends what you're after and what you mean, because a lot of people just mean like. Yeah, the problem with melee is the totems, and some people's problem with melee is just that, I don't know, it could just be a numerical balance problem simply, and other yeah. people's is just the feel and clunkiness, and there's so many. So I want to make sure I definitely understand the problems that are the most problematic, and then go from there and see how we can. But I do think it needs something pretty grand to really shake that up in a way that makes it not just... I don't want to band-aid the problem and I don't want to just push yeah. it down the line by three months again and again and again. I want to find something that is um, uh, just much better overall. And yeah. I don't know what that is yet, but I acknowledge the problem for sure. A lot of people here do. Um, and I obviously just to clarify, the solution to it is not to slow down the game. It's to create reasons you might... It, it, one way could be to create more motivations as to why you might want to play with less attack speed and stuff yeah. to make it feel more visceral. But... Like that's still at the end of the day your choice, and we're not taking away from that. It's just an option. Um. Awesome. Um, another thing, I've seen so many people asking about it as well in chat. Um, corpse skills been very strong for very long. Um, I mean, the simple thing is yes, they probably need a change. The reason why that um, goes. The reason why some of these things don't shift in the meta as much as other things is because. Um, like, ultimately, it comes down to the same problem of here's all the changes we feel like we need to make, and here's the ones we actually have the time to make. Um, it's mostly resourcing, I would say, that is the main issue. There are not many people who are very good at actually assessing what to change and how to change it. Yeah. So you can't give it to anyone. Um. And there, it, sometimes it's like, okay, can I just fix this with numbers or does this need something a bit more grand, like a redesign, or does this need a system change? Um, you need someone who's good at making that decision and people who can make those decisions well in a way that, again, isn't just band-aiding things or playing this kind of cat and mouse game of it's slightly nerfed and then something else gets slightly nerfed and buffed. And, like doing that is fine, but doing that, I get, dearly you design a system around that that doesn't achieve that, have, require that to be necessary. Yeah. Um, but yes, sometimes it is still the right answer to Band-Aid until we do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would just say that it is probably just a matter of it's been missed on time. Um, it is just a resourcing. I'd say it honestly is one of those things where, again, it doesn't it hasn't really actively crossed my mind too many times because I it's not a... It's, I always... I'm looking at bigger problems, grander scale, so... but. Look, if it's an issue, it's put a, if we get it on the list early, yeah. we can get, a, get ahead of things. So, sure. Cool. Uh, and then, I guess, as a final thing, which we, we would now kind of cover even half of uh, everything we, we planned out, but um, uh, you wanted to mention a few teasers for things that could be possible for the next gauntlet. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, well, you and I had a brief discussion, but again, like the main issue we've had, uh, honestly, is that the sooner I know, the more I can do. Because I can work that around. I can do if I like the ideas enough, I'll do it in my free time. Like I'll just go home and do it. Right? I, instead of playing one night, I will just do stuff there one night because it's fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, we discussed doing uh, um, having it so that for the gauntlet, we do we customize like the designs, what the skills of the bosses do, and so you get a like an like the different version of the Exarch, maybe his. Um, Ball, uh, like bullet how works differently you add in different skills and stuff like that like we may as well like it's pretty easy to do so doing a whole new animation on the creature is expensive that's a new animation that's a new uh, probably new effects new uh rigging uh not rigging uh audio yeah heaps of stuff like that but reusing existing effects reusing existing animation so like 
changing the shape, the, the, the pattern of a bullet hell, trivial. Um, spawning minions, trivial. Changing how minions are spawned, trivial. Uh, things like, for example, the Searing Exarchs, like Barrage of Mortars, you could certainly have a thing where they impact the ground, then they sit there, or they maybe turn into proximity mines, or they turn into volatiles, or they, after a delay, will do the mortar again and delay again. And so, like, you could even have it that they have a 20% chance that every single time they hit the ground, then for the rest of the fight, they will, every X seconds, rip, like, bounce again, targeting you every time. And so, like, as you get more and more of that skill use, that you get effectively a soft and rage uh, kind of thing, which is that boss doing... You know, that like that's just a random example of just, you know, off the top of my head kind of thing. Um, Very cool. That stuff's trivial to do. Um, but then we're talking about developing for the gauntlet instead of developing for the whole yeah. game. And obviously that can be controversial. And that's why I'm talking about getting in early and spending bonus time to kind of do that. Um, because cool. it's still cool. It's still fun. People love that. People watch it. People... And like, yeah, I mean, we can do it. And there's the other thing is like, we might be able to then find a way to integrate that stuff into core games somehow, like some sort of alternate way of doing the fight. Um, something that you have mentioned in the past is like having modifiers that specifically manipulate how boss skills work. You know, things like that can can be um, things that we could do with that. And yeah. we could make it a feature that everyone can now, you know, get their hands on. So uh, I did yeah. see somebody was asking as well, do you play the gauntlet ever? Uh, generally not because it's generally running at the point in time where I'm at like peak level busy. Yeah. Uh, even, and if I got to do, I don't like to half ass things like that. So if I yeah. did, if I don't get to do it, like to, at the start of a league, um, obviously the, the, a lot of my time is towards designing the next league, um, figuring out exactly what we're doing, figuring out exactly all of this stuff, like discussion upon discussion, but I generally go back to 40 hours a week and I generally get to play. Um, but I, to my own fault, I um I certainly t as like after the first month of that, um sometimes more, I am um, I double double triple my work hours pretty comfortably, and right. I just get fully into it. And that is at the point where I'm now like I can't play games. I don't really get a lot to do. And yeah. um, my choice, I like to do it. So technically, I could not, but I also am not going to compromise the game. Where like I I want the game to be as best as it can be all the time. And so I am of course going to be. I like, you know, getting into it around that point. Plus also preparing the live stream is like, that takes like a full month. It's a lot of work preparing that. I bet. Um, like preparing all these teasers. And um, lately I've started running around the office instead of walking. So I'm saving a little oh, bit wow. of time. Um, but wow. people, it stresses people out a little bit because they think something's going on. So <laughs> yeah. I'm weighing up whether or not that's actually worth it. But um <laughs> I figure I was like, oh, I need to get here. I'll just I'll just jog there instead. And people are like, well, something's happening. What's going on? Uh, so yeah, I, I'm. Um, <laughs> There's gonna I, um, be a running marquee mode now. <laughs> oh, it's good. It's fine. Uh, that's also, there was a dancing one from Once Upon a Time. There was? There's a few dancing ones out there. So a running one's not not too bad. That's funny. Awesome. We will let you go there. Thank you so much. This is way more time than I thought we would take as well. Thank you so much for doing this. We uh we super appreciate it. I hope everybody in chat liked it. And yeah, thank you so much for lending us your precious time and talking about everything. Yeah. Cheers. I hope uh, people got a bit of insight into how stuff works and how I think. Um, I want people to know how I think. Um, I think that's important. And I want hopefully people see, even if they don't agree with me and what we're doing here, that at least see that I definitely give a shit. Thank I you. give a shit more than probably everyone. I have um, not. To, I've put you know, nearing like many, many, many tens of thousands of hours into this game playing and working. I might even be over a hundred thousand hours at this point. I don't want people to think that, uh, <laughs> that we don't give a shit or anything. And I, um, I hope that going forward, uh, people are seeing a lot more of what they deserve to see as opposed to just like, you know, here's a league and here's a random other side feature. And it's a lot more responsive. Um, but yeah, that's my hope. That's my goal. Um, I'll try my best. So, but yeah, and hopefully 324 is awesome. If it's not, tell me, and I'm sorry, but I, it's looking pretty awesome. I'm excited for it 100%. Um, so yeah, just make sure uh, get some bingo boards of things you want to see fixed in it if you're not, because that's what I like to see. It gives me clear, concise, here's what I know is a problem, and I'll fix it. So 
if you have any issues, give me some bingo boards and uh, we'll go through them and see what we can do. It can be a three by three bingo as well. If there's not, hopefully there isn't always just 25 <laughs> problems with the league, but uh, um, you know, you can make it a two by two bingo if you want as well. It's fine. Awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. I hope everybody enjoyed watching and Twitch chat and later on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. And yeah, cheers. Us. Have a good one. Awesome. Bye. Thanks so much. That was, that was great. Cheers. See ya.